एंड वी आर लाइव जजमेंट डे सागर वी विल है विनर ऑफ द फर्स्ट एवर टाटा स्टील चेस इंडिया रैपिड वुमेन Yes, and we have a leader right now in Nana Zagnitze. But you know, anything can happen on the last day because on her heels are several other players as well. Tanya, shall we show our viewers the standings of the tournament before going ahead? Let's do that because this is such a close pack of wolves here, uh, Sagar. We've got Nana Zagnitze. With four and a half points at pole position, but right behind four players chasing her, looking for that turnaround. Kuneru Hampi, Anna Shunina, Maria Muzichuk, Veshali, who's had a phenomenal run so far. She needs to keep the momentum up. And just half a point behind Veshali is Harika. I think Harika also has a lot of reasons to be happy with her performance so far. Absolutely. So. Basically, it's these six players who have a very realistic chance of winning this event. Everything will be decided in the next three hours. But Tanya, before we get going, let's ask our director Saab to show us a clip of something very interesting. Can we have the clip, director Saab? This is right now the playing hall outside. The playing hall outside with some of the players who are ready to go. I see Nana Zagnitze there. I met her by the way she's on my way down. Yeah, yeah, she was very happy. I also met her, always smiling, and that's very rare. You know, uh, generally chess players are tensed before the round and they don't really interact. But I think as we discussed with Vishy yesterday, different players have different ways of coping. Different approaches, and uh, I met her this morning. She was saying that you know she's had a good run, but today is such a decisive day and such an important day for her. By the way, Sagar, she's been watching our commentary, really? and she said she's really enjoying it. <laughs> After going back home, oh, and that humpy game where we were all over the place, she was like, "Oh my God, what's happening?" You know. So, guys, uh, today's um, what happened to our we'll start in four four minutes? I don't know if the uh, thing is ready, director Sab. If there is, please let me know, uh, and I'll switch on that scene so that people can have a look. But for now, I think Tanya. Uh, players are getting ready. We have Anna Ushanina versus Maria Muzichuk. Let's have a look at the pairings for this round, shall we? Absolutely. And this is the action that's coming up. Three big rounds uh, today here at the National Library of India. The final day of the rapid. And take a look at the matchups. I mean, the first one, Vashali with the white pieces, takes on Hampi for both these players in the race to the top. This is such a crucial start of the day. On paper, Humpy is a favorite, but Vaishali is an ambitious young player with the white pieces. Vaishali versus Anything Humpy. Can happen. Wow, what a matchup! You know, like our current number one, and maybe someone in the future who is going to be number one. Olivia Kiol Basa versus Savita Shri. This is the battle of two youngsters who are here in the tournament. Anna Ushenina versus Maria Muzichuk. That's an important round, Tanya, from the standings perspective. Super important because this is the chaser pack. Yeah. They need to start strong to catch up against Nana, and then we've got Harika against Anna Muzichuk. These two know each other really well. They know the style of play really well, Sagar. They understand each other's opening. It's going to be a subtle match, all about the details. We've got Nana Zagnitze, the tournament leader, playing against the underdog of the event, Vantika. Nana is aiming. For, for a strong point. start here. Yeah, yeah. If she gets the full point, she'll really stamp her authority on that title, and I think uh, then it'll be difficult for people to catch her. But if Vantika can stop her, then it throws the tournament wide open once again. One hundred percent. I think what she's saying to Vantika today is, "Nana karte var, tumhi pe kar baithe." Wow, Tanya. <laughs> 
and sagar we got <laughs> tanya was that prepared or was it spontaneous i just I, i was thinking about what i could say and then i thought na 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 doesn't work in this situation mm. and then i was like pyar var you know it's all the same because yeah, pyar mein hi to var hota hai kya baat and aaj are you feeling like var or pyar I want to see all the war on the chessboard and all the pyar outside it sagar with our chat with our janta let's take a look at the playing hall and see if our players are ready for no pyar only war let's go and we have things heating up there players are ready i think the games have begun tanya shall we get going maybe we'll start off with the game of vaishali versus Humpy, I think there has been some opening move made already. No, it was an inauguration that happened. Tanya uh, and both the players you can see here are getting ready, feeling quite. While the players are getting relaxed. ready, Sagar, I am also getting ready with my heart contour. rate monitor. Acha. Oh, I forgot about the contour today. I'll put it on on the break. Why? For my name. I've forgotten, Tanya. That's so. Oh, I'm trying to put this on. Okay. Let's... And we've got lift off. I see Vishali making the first move on our camera. Sagar, from this angle, does that look like D four? I think that's D four. Yes. Knight of six. D four by Vishali playing the London system on the board. Dosto, it's going to be great. This is going to be an exciting matchup. And uh, Humpy has a heart rate of eighty. Nilas Kashwin, if Vishali's rate uh, heart rate is working. It's working. We've got Vishali's heart rate working. Mine is on, and what about Humpy? That is on as well. What we've come Humpy. to see is, do we have one Humpy. on Humpy? Humpy is working. Yeah, no. that usually a heart rate is steadily around one hundred and fifteen to one hundred and twenty. Yeah. So going to be interesting to see how that uh, changes today. By the way, talking about the London system, this has become a sort of a favorite of the Waka kids. Yeah, yeah. This has become a favorite opening for the Waka kids, and I think because they are working together, training together, we often see Prague employ the London system. We see Vesali play, uh, and it's really gained in popularity, spe especially mm. in the speed chess format. Absolutely, and the point is that you don't really have to prepare much. That was the initial feeling when someone played the London, but Tanya now with theory gaining so much pace in the London. Preparation is the key. So at this point, we can see knight d2 on the board, and I believe Humpy in the past has brought her queen out to b6 and played it in this position. Let's see if she manages to do just that in this game. Hundred and nine heartbeat for Humpy. Uh, I think Vaishali. We are still waiting for it to come on our screen. We'll see when it comes. Well, queen b six, an opening move is one that is so like a double edged sword. Mm. You're basically saying I'm targeting your pawn, but also falling back in development, uh, being materialistic there. But white often has to prove the compensation. What Humpy is saying is that I'm ready for war here. I want to take my chances with the black pieces, and very often to be able to do that, you have to make these risky decisions. Absolutely. I will not be surprised, Sagar, to see Humpy deploy. the opening that you're talking about with queen b6 i agree i agree and but you know what makes me very surprised is that humpy's thinking here for over a minute you know this is something that she would be prepared after five moves why is she thinking what is she thinking tanya i'll tell you what she's thinking this move knight b d2 mm. is something which there's always this move order details in this position so sometimes white delays knight d2 you can go c3 sometimes you can go for the jabawa london with knight c3 i think humpy is just trying to remember and focus on what her approach should be once white has committed and we've got bishop g4 on the she board she puts the bishop here pinning the knight but more importantly when she goes e6 her bishop will be outside the pawn chain Even more importantly, she has a threat saga right now because you pin the knight, you win the d4 pawn. Oh, you take this here, you take this, and you want to take this pawn, but yeah, it works. It Tanya. works because there's knight d7. But yeah. let's just show that a tactic. Let's make a non-move here. For example, a3. A3 takes, takes, and takes. And why I was a bit surprised here that it may be a trap is that if sometimes this works, if the knight was not on f6, mm. and Tanya was very quick to spot that here you don't lose the queen, 
you can block with the knight so that's something which you must keep in mind it's a big uh, trap that happens in many of the openings tanya shall we go to another game and the game we've got to go to sagar is the tournament leader nana taking on vantika here and we've got an english opening but a very slow position again you know speaking of nana the one thing that always comes up in our conversation is playing non theoretical positions and excelling in them and this opening that she's gone for today again this small soft setup c4 b3 against a player like nana don't get fooled it's not without poison fantastic yeah that is true she's played c4 and vantika has responded back with knight f6 uh, tanya it's uh, some kind of a king's indian like structure with a double fianchetto rook e8 is the last move very solid very nice position by uh, nana in this must win kind of a game for her i would say not a must win she's the leader but if she wins this she makes a very strong claim towards the title and tanya while we are at it i would like to just take a short leave from here for a couple of minutes and bring someone very special into our commentary room is that okay is amrita joining us well i don't need to go and pick her up right She'll come. Uh, it depends on how last night went. <laughs> But okay, I, who who is coming? Give me a hint. Give us a hint. Uh, well, people have to wait for good things to happen. You know, good things don't come so easily. Chat. So, what's going? Where's chat? Why can't I see chat right now? I am also trying to get the chat, but you can see them here. They are all very happy. Chat. Are you happy? Yes or no? Dosto. Oh, look at the suggestions, Prague. Oh, actually, it could be chat. It could be because I do know that Prague has arrived uh, in the building. But we'll see, Sagar. Uh, definitely, if you want to go now and get yeah. our guest, I'll go and bring. Meanwhile, we'll have a look here. at this position. And Tanya, you can uh, move through the games. All right. Tanya, how does it feel when you sit here? Do you it feel can... like in control? Yeah, I I does feel you know feel like... I've got this whole OBS thing set up. Honestly, I'm terrified that I'm going to spoil uh, spoil something for you, and by the time you get back, the broadcast would crash. Uh -huh. But also, I love the power to draw arrows. You know that I need that direction. If you want that big power to draw arrows. So, chat. Let's take a look at this opening we've got. While Sagar gets us special guest. Honestly, I have no idea who's joining us, but. This position. So, Vantika has just made the move c six, and the whole point of this is that at some critical moment, Black wants to strike in the center with d five. You want to try to gain more space. What does White want? Meanwhile, is to get d three e four in to stop d five and also sort of create their own bind in the center. Uh, whenever d five does come after that, and the trades happen, this bishop, bishop, bishop. Bishop often becomes a monster. So this is quite a rich position out of the opening. Once again, not a theoretical battle, but uh, lots to fight for here. Let's continue on our opening tour. And where do you want to go, Chat? Let's do Harika. Let's see Harika what she's up to. Wow, we've got an end game. At least a queen trade already. And how do we evaluate this position? You know the first thing that we have to always take into account when the material balance is there. Who has more space? And simply because of the pawn on c4, white does have more space. White has a freer development with the bishop coming to b2 at some point. Can even come to e3, attack the a7 pawn. The rook will come to c1. We can try to push these pawns with a3, b4, b5. A typical idea to improve this bishop and to destroy this pawn wall. The Berlin Wall, as we call it, which blocks the bishop with the idea of b4, b5. So just a slight, slight edge, I would say, for Harika in this position, simply because the plans are simpler for white than for black. And how do we know that plans are not simple for black? It's hard to find a break in this position. So with no break, activity can be a problem. So to round this up, I'm going to say Harika has got a slight edge out of the opening. Let's move on and check my heart rate. Ninety nine under hundred is already an achievement for me. This is a Grunfeld chat, and this is one line that I actually play myself. So let's take a look from the start. 
Oh, I'm getting an update that on that note, uh, Grunfeld has that effect on me. My heart rate has successfully crossed 100. And uh, we've got D5. So we trade. This is mainline theory. Bishop D2, by the way, this is an opening that I really prepared for the Olympiad. Played it, uh, I think, at least in one game that I can remember, but maybe more. But I quite like this line from white, bishop d2. The idea is simple, that if black trades, instead of taking with the pawn, we want to take with the bishop. And that often helps in neutralizing black's bishop on g7. Once we get d5 in, we will be able to do that. Sagar, please take your place. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we got, no, this here. very soon so then again we'll have to shift everything okay fine i was explaining this grunfeld actually hmm. so this is an opening that this is what you have played that's exactly what i was telling chad that this was actually part of our camp preparation for the olympiad quite a bit and i really enjoy playing this opening of bishop d2 of course there are many good alternatives here there are lines with e4 uh, which is of course super mainline theory you can also go knight f3 but e4 is what is played usually immediately uh, taking the center, long theoretical battle. Bishop d2 was played by Anna Oshinina, and after bishop g7, e4. <laughs> Hitting the knight, and like I was mentioning, that yes. after knight c3, you want to take with the bishop, yeah. so that you can go d5 and quickly get rid of black's uh, dark squared bishop. Short castle, queen d2. I like this move, so what you want to do is go long castle yourself in several lines. c5, d5 was played. All this is very normal you develop your bishop on c4 trades trades with the bishop again it's not much for white in this position but white with this bishop has a sort of a nagging edge targets in the position plus an easy trade of the dark squared bishop and we do have our guest joining us chat and you're going to love this so uh And we have the one and only Vishy Anand joining us in the commentary right now on the very critical day, Vishy. The final day where we'll have the champion of the rapid section. Excited for the games? Well, this one already looks familiar. You don't mind Nepal. Yeah. BD2. The uh, quick Grunfeld. win that you had. That's no, right, with exactly. F5 in the end. Yeah. Yeah. That was wow. a brilliant game. Actually, I was preparing this line for the Olympiad and that was one of the games that we did look at. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. You shouldn't count on it happening too many times yeah. going forward, but it's... Nice but it gives know, you yeah. the confidence to play Bishop D2. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Tanya, which game should we begin with? Let's get an update on the Humpy Vaishali board mm. because that's quite a lot of interest Very in that one. important game and a London system employed by Vaishali here. Vishy uh, and Humpy going for Bishop G4 early and uh, both players have traded their light squared bishops. I have a feeling H3 was a slip because uh, normally I think he plays C3 or maybe C4. Uh, H3 looks like a slip because she has then volunteered to play Bishop C6. Because if you capture with the knight, Queen F8, Ooh. if you capture with the Queen, Queen B6. Mm. Uh, so it I guess H3 was a slip up, but uh, anyway, no damage done. <laughs> take on C6, take on F3. Uh, but I, think I would black guess black has no problems here. Mm. Yes, there's no, there is nothing left. Uh, the Queen B6, CD4, C5. Gen so. Generally, there's this bishop left on C8 in such structures here. Black doesn't have to worry about that. So maybe that's fine. Yeah. Also, one question here. When Vashali played knight d2 at this moment, Humpy really slowed down. She took about two minutes to make her decision. Why do you think that was the case? Because there uh, are many choices. There is takes on d4, bishop f5. There's bishop f5. There is uh, takes on d4, bishop g4. There is queen b6, both with and without takes. Mm. There is e6. And there's knight h5. Mm. And this takes a knight h5. <laughs> And all of these are pretty interesting lines. Now, I don't know, maybe Humpy has two systems you know, she was choosing or she just pauses. Hmm. Also, before we move on to the next game, uh, I want to ask you in this very crucial round coming into this game, uh, Vashali playing with the white pieces, both Vashali and Humpy are part of the chasing pack. 
half a point behind the leader. So is it still one game at a time or with White you want to try and create your chances? What's the approach? Irrespective of your score, you, you want to at least um, pose some problems with White. Mm. Obviously, you have the luxury that uh, if you make a mistake, it's only equality. Whereas with Black, you make a mistake, you get into some trouble. So uh, with White, you yeah, you have to probe at least, but uh, you have to be sensible about it and, and keep your... I don't think uh, it's yet time for desperate measures or anything. Hmm. Um, they'll also see how the other game is going. How is um, Nana doing? Nana, uh, Vantika is uh, the C4, B3. Maybe we'll take it from the top. Oh, H5. Wow. Okay. Vantika is uh, actually quite aggressive. She is positional, but she also pushes her pawn like she did with, I think, Anna Ushenina. She pushed G5 g4 down the board and now she's playing h5 yeah now i know what sagar is talking about see the hand thing there <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes um, h5 long ago <laughs> it would have seen seen a very suspect move but now uh, it's more and more common i don't like it again because of g 5 hmm. and i maybe even g 5 and f4 Mm -hmm. um, on knight e1 4 somehow that pawn it looks like a solution chasing a problem you know? it's going out there but what is black's problem that it's trying to solve right um, don't you like d4 in such position no d4 e4 knight d2 f uh, e5 uh, I mean uh, d5 and then everything starts depending on f3 mm -hmm. which may or may, may be okay but uh Let's, well, let's knock around a few moves. D4, E4, uh, Knight G5. That is an alternative. But the thing is, thanks to my H5, I can actually play Bishop F5. I don't have to play D5 as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you just After, make the moves, let's yeah, say D4, E4, E4, Knight G5. E4. Knight G5, I could play Bishop F5. Okay. And, and no G4. Yes, exactly. But, and so, okay, a computer wants to play F3 and... It gives a slight edge to white. Why? If I take on e4, mm. I mean take on f3. Sorry, queen f3 or what? Or does it want to do rook f3 and sack something? E takes f3. Yeah, can you take that? Okay. And if queen f3, let's find out why bishop h6 doesn't work. Ah, just knight f7 and uh, d4. Is that right? Yes. Ah. Whoa, yeah, whoa. so knight of seven and e4. Okay, just we looked at some of what happened. It was a great story with uh, Vaishali, and uh, well, against um, who was it? Anna, maybe. So Vaishali uh, accidentally made an illegal move. Hmm. She went knight d6. Check for king the king and broke, except the knight was pinned. Oh. We missed that moment. Yeah, so then the arbiter came and uh, I mean, you allowed a couple of uh, illegal moments. Was there a time of... penalty at that moment? No, or no? no, not yet. A time penalty comes uh, in the second, second, I think. Right. But the second violation. The first violation is just a warning. Warning, yeah. <laughs> so, and, Injection. Is it working? That was funny. In fact, Vaishali first said she didn't understand what the Avatar was saying. So she just did the piece. You know, we've seen this. We've seen this happen at this event even previously with Vidit making that illegal move. I mean, with these uh, players, what do you think happens when there's this blind spot that you miss something like this? Illegal moves aren't common, but uh, they do occur. Mm. Their frequency is very, very low. I mean, it's that one thing, right, with Vidit, and that's it, in the last few years. Yes. So, in fact, the frequency is quite low because we are hardwired to make legal moves. There was but, one uh, with Magnus Ali Reza also, no? Was Wasn't there? there an illegal move? No, it was more like they spoke about, uh, like, he had material left on the board, some, and then he... Uh, oh, yeah, that was, you mean the in the World Rapid? World Rapid, that, yeah. was, that was a question of whether he had any right to play on or something. Right, yeah. right, that was different. And he, because he won on time, the question is, did it make any sense uh, to win on time? But uh, there was mating material in that white could, um, I mean, Ali Reza could uh, 
knight his uh, pawn and then put the knight in a bad square and get checkmated. <laughs> Ridiculous, but nonetheless, it's legally possible. So it's right. not a draw kind of thing. Yeah. Right. right. By the way, uh, a big uh, result here. Vaishali and Humpy have drawn their game already. Oh, wow. So after takes, takes, bishop f3, bishop d6, they agree. Oh, there's no move uh, limit here. They can offer a draw at any point. Are you surprised with this early draw? Uh, it's if it's allowed, then I, I it surprises me less. But uh, it's a pity, I think. I think uh, mm. she could have tried a bit more. It is a nice tournament. Why not uh, make a few more moves and see where this goes? <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I understand why Shali's thing is that she fumbled her. I think. I think she played H three and then realized, oh, not here, mm. and. Um, she feels that she squandered the opening edge and uh, mm. maybe that's what kind of drove it. But Humpy seems to offer the draw bishop d6, which is kind of, I know you're from this thing, but you want to get it over with. <laughs> so it's the most... <laughs> and I have the black pieces, so I'm happy with it. Is that draw. what happened? Yes, that's what... Oh, so she did go for knight g5. Yes, directly with knight g5. Yeah. Maybe your idea of f4 in the air. Yes. d5. Trades and rook c1 and develops d3 attacks the knight so this is the current position okay let's see what happens after f4 what if you take ef ah yes i will have to play ef because gf you have rook takes e3 right mm. yeah. and that might not be ideal no with this queen b6 check yes, and... and bishop f5 and knight b4 and suddenly you see Vantika's h5 also has the advantage white is never going to play g4 mm. so so one of the key ideas of h5 is not only to put pressure on king side but bishop f5 comes easier with no g4 yes mm, nice so what else can she do it's well it's either that or h4 if h4 i can even play bishop g4 because right. you're not really going to play f3 and uh, that looks quite looks like it's worked for Vantika. Can My feeling is still then that knight g5 wasn't uh, well thought through enough, or maybe d3 wasn't punchy enough. Let's try without d3, let's try f4. I'm mean, obsessed with this move. Very much. <laughs> ah, but you'll just go d4. Ah, knight b4 as well. I'm uh, not sure because it's. I don't it know. Could what's be some knight f7 in the air, I think. Yeah, like fe and this bishop opening up, it looks a bit dodgy. Knight b4. Yeah, no, no, f4 doesn't really cut it out. So here, bishop at 6 and actually if Nana has to go back, knight f3, actually, that's wait a minute, just... if f4, why e f4, why not uh, d4, why not d4? I think you missed that. Ah, you mean black to play d4, yeah. okay. Because if you take, I take with the, you I take, take on here. f4 and now you're completely messed up. And if you go, knight c4, hoping knight f5, knight uh, d5, but then for sure knight f 7 yeah, and this. Oh, this is very cute. Knight f7, king into f7. You start with knight d6 check. Oh, nice. Ah, no, this is nice. Nice one. Yeah. Takes f5 check. Nice card check. Yeah. And you lose the queen. What has happened? Uh, she's played some move. She's yeah. played oh, h4, 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 h4 and bishop g4. It looks like the whole h5 thing so far has worked out for Vantika, no? With the current position that we have. Yes. And the way white has handled it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this looks actually, if Nana, uh, by chance, even loses this game, that would mean that the tournament is now wide very open. wide open, with Vaishali Humpy joining her at the top. And what, what's happening with Harika and Anna Muzichu? Can we have a look at that game? So this has come out of... Some of these reties. Reti, it looks yeah. great for black to me. Doesn't it feel like white has space here and... Actually, black has um, managed to push his pawn, her pawns a little bit. If the pawn was on g7, it's solid in a different way. Mm. But I can still play at some point f6. I have a... Mm. Uh, you know, a king side, with, which is symmetrical. I mean, it's four versus four. White could just run out of pieces to do anything. So... 
That's what mine to me. So it's a good solid setup for Anna. Here. I think she's done well. Um, in these endings, sometimes you if White has time before B five, night before some C five, all these plans occur. But uh, here, it looks like uh, Black is well in time. Mm. She's got the space, and she's going to start swapping rooks now. So, got it. You have uh, like spent a lot of time with Anna, like especially in the commentary. So, what's your feeling of her as a player, and what is not working out for her here? I mean, uh... we were co-commentators. I don't think that gives me tremendous insight into her play, <laughs> but uh, sometimes you just have a bad tournament. Uh, she's uh, quite strong. I mean, you saw how she fell behind against Humpy and then kept on pounding mm. away. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> And came back. That was very creditable. Yeah. Um, she's quite. <laughs> she's quite. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, this looks nice. -ish. This looks good. Uh, you can take a look at Savita Sri's position. Okay. Olivia. Wait, Olivia? Ooh, interesting. Oh, this is that Sicilian, uh, I guess. Yeah. Wait. This is... Uh, bishop e to Bishop G. No, something else. Yeah. The thing is, it looks like black is very active, but that pawn on d4 snuffs everything out. If you remove the pawn on d4 even, it's nice. Mm. But here, I think the idea is even queen takes d5, rook takes d5, f4. You know, this rook on d5, and it I'm reminds And I'm threatening me. a b4. Yeah, you know, there's this, I think it was a Rajabo with this rook getting trapped on d5. There's something. Yes. It just it, you need a bit more time for, to, for the trap to snap shut. So here probably h5 and rook c5 and black is in time. But still, it's always in the air. So h5, if you go b4, I'm in time with a5. Yeah. Because <clears throat> bishop c4, I have rook f5. Mm -hmm. And uh, bishop e4, I have rook b5. And a3, I take, take rook a4. Oh, nice. <laughs> but actually, there has been a rook on d5 ah, which has gotten trapped. Correct. So it's a bit. Uh... I think Surya plays a lot this line, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It was more venomous than it is now. But after queen d5, I would prefer not to take queens. Mm. Maybe queen h3 and then uh, g4 and f4. And the point is, again, that white's bishop is so much superior to black's bishop. Yeah, this pawn. Ah. So if I can play. F4 is desirable, but I'm never going to get it because of rook e3. Okay. Unless I have played g4, g5 first. Then I can ignore the rook on e3. So queen h3 might be a place to start and then try for um, g4, g5. Mm. So white You can't even push. stop it. H6, I'll just sack. Mm. And uh, once I get that f4, then uh, your, uh, your king side is very, very weak. Because I'm attacking without any counterplay. There is just nothing happening right, here. Right, exactly. So, this pawn is the most... Ah, but queen h3, maybe queen e6, and this kind of stuff. And a5, a4, a3 is too slow? a5, a4, yeah, it is a plan. But um, g4, g5 is going to be faster. Mm. And uh, if you get to a4, the question is, should I play a3? Yeah. Or should I... Let's see, uh, a5, g4, g4, a4, g5. I don't believe a3. a3 would work, would it? a3, uh, gf6, a2. It looks crazy. No, it, uh, yeah, it does. Because work. we don't have queen b5 <clears throat> also, so. But gf6. Yeah. ab2, and then let me play a3. Oh, or bishop a4. Seven. Yeah, or a4, I don't know. Nice. But a6. wait, no, it's not over. Queen c5. So maybe a4. Wow. It's just oh, never over. There's a background issue, yeah. Nice. Uh, this is actually an interesting position. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, Can maybe I go... Queen G2? Is that an option? Excellent, yeah. Queen G2 because we're getting Queen B7 and the Queen is coming back to defend. Oh, maybe. sorry. Yeah. yeah, and I want to go Queen B7 Correct. to go G6. Oh, nice one. Tanya is uh, getting very sharp uh, by analyzing with you. <laughs> I'll be very inspired when Anand is here. Then I go into a chess mode. And she, <laughs> like, oh, yesterday, I just gained some 100 ELO points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one. Uh, but I, I'm not completely sure. Maybe after A3, I should uh, pause for... Instead of uh, G5, maybe I should play A3. Mm. Uh, 
because then B5, B4 is going to take Slow. longer. Yeah. It's slower. And now I can even offer exchange to queens because I've got a permanent weakness on the queen side to use. So now let me play G5. We go bishop B7. Yeah, B4 looks crazy. It's okay. And then uh, yeah, it's not, not easy to decide. Maybe the queen D7 is very strong. Oh, okay. Nice. And B4, is that a move? Yes. A, maybe A, B, 4, A, 3. This is interesting tactic with F, 4, Rook, E, 3, Queen, E, 3, D, 3, Bishop, H, 7. Oh, so, nice. Oh, actually, you're right. You're right. You're completely okay. right. Ah, that is a cute okay. one. Oh, right. that's a nice move. Anyway, this is just nuts. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's really nice. Ah, no, that's that finishes cute. everything. Yeah. Sure. We don't even need this. Okay, so what was decided so, after queen d5? Took, she took the, in the game, she actually went ahead and sort of... Captured the rook, the yeah, queen, yeah? this happened. Yeah, I, mean, I suspect uh, this kind of stuff has been worked out a bit. Uh, that black now knows what to do with queen mm -hmm. d5 and there's some way, a concrete way to get around play. I don't know if f4 or g4 or what. But she did go b4 and she wants to oh. play bishop c4 next. Oh, she's gone this g4, is the bishop yeah, e5, this is the b4. position. She wants to play bishop c4. But now that thing is... Okay, now bishop f4 and rook e5 is available. So yeah. it's not getting trapped. But if bishop f4, I go bishop c4, rook e5, rook takes d4, attacking the bishop and I'm winning on d6. Oh. True. So True. what is... Uh... So this is actually a very is dangerous position. Is rook c8 an option? Oh, rook c8, maybe c4... No, you don't because you go DC. C2 yeah? check and Bishop F4 check is coming at the end. Right. Yeah, so... good try though. <laughs> yeah. I think we're in the saga thing of getting this Rook on yeah. D5 somehow. <laughs> but wait, uh, Rook uh, C8. Bishop E4, Rook E5. And I'm surviving there maybe. And if A4. Now the threat is bishop e4 to trap. To be fair, I've, I, whenever you play, I can play rook c3. I was thinking in d3, right? That's what I want. <laughs> no, wait wait a second, one second. Uh, let's try a5. Bishop e4, d3. Okay. c3. And... Uh, you want to take on b4? It's annoying, isn't it? It's not working. But wait, one sec, let's try... Um, if I take twice and go bishop f4 check, you go rook d2, and I don't think it's working for me. Bishop a2? Bishop a2, a b4, and I'm threatening b3. <laughs> That's too relaxed, no? I mean, if this F4 is working, or... I... It shouldn't work, maybe. <laughs> okay, but no, hang on. So instead of bishop a2, you could have played the king c1. But then bishop uh, bishop c3 have rook d3 take c3 so now i go bishop f4 check king b2, b2. uh a b4 and threatening to go back with check but you have rook at g1 so and everything's yeah, fine so no... yeah. uh... but what if we do the same idea with rook c3 so that you don't have c3 instead of a5 yes um i wasn't sure if you could just protect the pawn from half but anyway let's have a look so rook c3 So we are running a five. Ah, this is just on. Oh, it's a uh, huge void. It yeah. just says rook d one, and that's the end of the game. Oh, because there's no defense to bishop e four anymore, or f four. Yeah. But also the surprising... Oh, it's a very nice thread because rook d one, so that d c two no longer forks. Oh, that's why not rook ah, h e one. Okay, correct. And rook d one is the only move in this position for a bigger yeah, advantage. Yeah, a lot of uh, yeah? instructions. Nothing else position. besides rook d no. one, right? Yeah. That's crazy. So let's just go back and see oh. a five. No, it's uh, it's the same. It's just uh, that whole line that we analyzed works out. It says bishop f four. No big deal, <laughs> because we have solved the problem of. Um, Bishop e4, because we're doing d3. So bishop f4 is uh, the saving move here. 
But then C3, you take so on... Huh? Now I have a square of my thing. We should oh, be for D3, you just C3, move. Right, five. right. You don't take on C3. And that's maybe... Yeah, that's, that's enough. Good. Ah, okay. Nice. Wow. Some great bit of analysis there. And right now, in the game, this is what has happened. An update, Harika and Anna has also ended in a draw. Oh, that's very interesting. Actually, right here. Hmm. Which means that the most important game from the standings perspective is Nana Zagnitze with Vantika now. And oh, but this went... This one got horrible. Somehow that Nana got just supposed everything. to hit six is on B4. There's a white rook <laughs> on B5. What the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> where, where did all the pieces... Okay, so after Bishop G4... There was queen d2, rook c8, knight a4, queen e7, rook c5, rook here, rook c1, oh, bishop f8. She Nana did this to Vaishali as well. Vaishali is doing very well, but Nana managed to confuse the issue yeah. enough and suddenly it was over. I mean, this is huge. Uh, it looks horrible. Fp. This rook c5, rook b5 can be very annoying because you feel the rook doesn't belong there. Somehow you should yes. trap it, but it's not getting trapped. Well, that's the point. A5 got in there very early. <laughs> we don't it's have like this. that Benoni, Benoni when white goes a4, some rook e4, rook b4 stuff. Yeah. And like that. Mm -hmm. but, like, takes, takes. And now ed. It's two pawns up. So. Wow. wow. And it's just resigns. It, it seems yeah. like uh, is it Nana is running away with this event. No, 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 I don't mean resigns. I mean she can't resign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's... yeah, then uh, it's huge for Nana. One, she then increased the lead one point. And... Queen d7 played. Can you take on b7? I'm certain you can. Rook takes and rook takes c6 even. Don't even Whatever want bishop c6. I go, then I go bishop e4, rook... Uh... She goes knight c5. Ah, and then rook uh, a Yeah. This is what's happening. You can't take. Because of C7. No, then I have 92 chair arcing H2. Oh, she took she took here, but yeah, rook C7 will just finish then, it off. Yeah, rook C7, 92 checking H2. That's just over. You can take on C1, but rook D7 and Vantika is losing on time, so. Mm. Oh, she has six seconds left. Yeah. 92 check. King She's H2 probably going to take the two rooks, no? I don't see anything else. Well, there's two rooks for a queen Please. and knight. Yeah. So bishop takes c1 at the end. And that takes care of all your can't play on d2 and d2 and all that stuff as well. So Can't even take on d3 because f7 is hanging. Queen yeah. e7. So now rook f7 check. And then you get two rooks on 7. Hmm. Wow, so Nana, st Nana starts the day pretty strong. Yeah, huh? very well. And it turned around really quickly. We've got. I think she plays those kinds of positions where there are so many possibilities that uh, it's easy to go. No, she is a very strong player. Yeah. So even when she's worse, she's dangerous because her position has potential. Mm. As you can see, Black had to play this. Uh, there were probably one or two quite exact moves. Mm. Uh, and uh, if you miss that, then your next. Landing thing should be at least an equal position, but uh, this one, uh, I mean, bishop f8 b4, there's so many things that look wrong. Yeah, so somewhere there's knight a4 rook c5, and she didn't. Uh, you have to I have to see, look at the position closely mm. uh, and see what you can find. But this is just possible. Oh, look the at bait? this now, she's bishop going to go with the second one, and then yeah. she goes either queen c5 check or, or bishop, bishop a3. Yeah, check. wow, and Both this is just over. Wow, I mean, the computer is thinking of eight. Not bishop a3 because it's longer than a mate and six. <laughs> and so queen c5 is a mate and six. She goes to bishop a3 and after you've got it. I think now she can resign with a clear conscience here. There's nothing much. Oh, she resigns, yes. Which Big win for Nana. Yeah. Takes the lead by a point with two games remaining. Right. So we have only one game left now. Olivia versus Savita Shri. And somehow Olivia has managed to... Create a lot of play. Okay, then this one. Uh, Savita must have blundered something. And this rook on g5 is... Rook c8. Everything was okay till here. a4, bishop f4. Ah, she forgot to include d3. Oh, she didn't. Oh. She didn't include d3. Because that is just uh, flat equal. But after this, it's uh, no longer. Mm. 
Yeah, and D3, C3, Rook, E5, you actually win the C3 pawn as well then. So Bishop, B7, Rook, C3, that's important. Yeah, very If you don't play Rook, C3, then you are worse. But uh... Right. So D3 was a very important move from Edson. Mm -hmm. She missed that. And here, after Rook, D4, now White has just won a few pawns. Yeah. And also... Okay. Yeah, in the current position with the rook on g5, this a pawn is just, this is over, no? Mm. Yes. So, how so, so, Savita's uh, actually done a reasonable idea to put the, now she'll have to play d4 and rook a5 check if she wants to continue. But I'll get my rook to a4. It's lost, but uh, yeah. so king b3, h3 maybe. Oh, wait a minute, this is nice. H3, because uh, that bishop on f4, the mo it's most important thing it's doing, it's stopping, uh, <laughs> uh, it's stopping um, f4 and bishop b7, controlling h1. Mm. So it's very important it never moves from there. What is the valuation now? H3 is very interesting. It's like suddenly there's counterplay on this side. You can't take rook f4 because h2, you can't stop it from queening. Rook a4, you're in time with the h pawn. Mm. Stroke of luck, I think, uh, that she has this uh, resource. But she what went happens? rook g8 in the game. Oh, that is... Uh, she, she went here, not d4, rook g8. Yeah, now imagine, after bishop b7, you have to you have to open the diagonal with this. Now rook d5, rook h5 will collect even the last pawn. So, no, it was important to put the rook on a5 so that, and leave the bishop on f4. There were some tricks. Sometimes it's nice. You have this pawn on f4. Yeah. And uh, after h3, white is lost because the bishop can't get back in time because of this mm. pawn. Yeah. And then you say, without the f3 pawn, I'm winning. And with the f3 pawn, I'm losing. It's almost that. <laughs> Yeah. And then this is hopeless because I have so many ways to win. Yeah, me, can you also just rook h5, rook h8, yeah. trade the rooks and go f4 and win yeah. if that's also winning? Yeah. Yeah. Rook h5 and f4 is where it resigns because uh, yeah, yeah, she does it. For it. So she'll go rook h8. I think after bishop f2, rook h4 is winning if I want it. Hmm. Funny thing, if we remove the rooks and all the kingside pawns, it's a draw. Because I'll put my king on d6 and it's a fortress. But uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do it because uh, white will create a pass pawn and this pass pawn is neutralized. So now rook h8 and uh, it's game over. Rook h8, king h8, f4, and then king b3, king b4, c4, c5. I don't even need f4 really. But, uh... And it was so important to have that rook on a5 and bishop on f4 to stop this I... defense. I think uh, I was talking to Savita yesterday uh, at the dinner table and she said, I don't know what happened on day one. I was feeling so nervous. But on day two, I was already feeling much better. You know, so I think this big stage where you're facing all the top players is uh, is quite intimidating. I, and but it's it, good you do it at a young age. Sure. And oh, this has happened. This yeah, has happened. Too. Also, it was funny when uh, I think she was going for some advice to Anand uh, in the evening <laughs> and then Vaishali was with her and uh, Sagar said, both of you will be going. So, Savita said, no, I like to be scolded alone. <laughs> <laughs> I did not scold. <laughs> <laughs> Put that off my chest. <laughs> so. Sminil Mahajan in the chat says the only thing in chess that is better than Vishy's analysis is Vishy playing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been enjoying commentary? You did the world championship, you did the recent tournaments, you've been doing a little bit of it. Is that something you've been enjoying? Yes, um, I definitely enjoyed uh, the world team championship also. Yes. Uh, and the world championship was nice. It I mean, sixth game could have been shorter. <laughs> I I mean, at about seven o'clock, I thought hopefully they'll draw this soon and I can go home. And uh, I was already <laughs> slightly, I wanted to have dinner and go to sleep. And I thought it had been a fun game. And I didn't know there was still like 90 moves left. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every time I think, okay, Nepo has saved it, let's go. And he, he, he would, he just, he demolished his pawn structure for no reason. Then he sacked something for no reason. And I was looking at him, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and then at midnight, I could forget about uh, everything else. <laughs> at midnight, I finally got to go home. So, aside from that, that game, aside from that game, I liked all the <laughs> <laughs> so. But 
but it but uh, to compensate the match did end two games early. Mm. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, uh, Akhil and Aruna joined me, and the idea was they could watch a little bit. Uh, Akhil could get, watch a couple yeah. of days of uh, chess and so on. He comes in for was it day game ten? Yes, yes, must have must have been game ten. He came in and. Uh, It was the match was over that day. Was yeah. it game eleven? Eleven. Game eleven. Game ten. It finished. Game ten. No, it, no, it was a fourteen game match. Correct. I, yeah. So, so game eleven. It, finished. it was. Came for game eleven. But I mean, then, it uh, kind of finished in game six. Was the general feeling? Yes, I think both saw no way to win a game. They. Uh, that was the biggest. Ch- that once the deadlock was broken, then the pressure became huge because mm. uh, till then neither had uh, gotten. Any noticeable winning chances? They were mm. playing, both playing very well and neutralizing each uh, each other very well. But after that, uh, of course, the score went against. Uh, right. I think we have a result. Yes, Olivia has won. So we had three decisive games. Anna Ushenina beating Maria Muzichuk. I think we missed that finish right of that game because that was a big result there. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it looked very equal, like at move around move twenty at or so. At the Kimi Fan ninety three, and we just lose a rook. How did? Was it a blunder? It looks like, yes, it is. It is a blunder. And knight c five check. But the problem is here. Yeah, but the, even if you don't play king d six, your rook is trapped. Oh shit! So a five was a bad move. Instead of a five, um, she could have played. She can't play knight f. Oh no, she could have played knight f six. Because if I go e five check, king e five, c five check, knight d five check. Oh wow! And uh, knight d five, rook two, and uh, you know it's just about saving. Mm. I don't know though. I mean, there might be some small edge like rook at seven, rook c seven, and so on, because your king is in the way of your rook and all that. But um, it might work out. But this means that after a five, it's just lost because knight c five is coming regardless of what you play. Yes, <laughs> I think awesome. she missed the how strong this is. Yeah, she could resist with the king uh, e seven because knight c five you can play b six and you can potter on for a while. Mm. But uh, after king e six, you're walking into a check as well. Mm. Mm. Again, it's just clear. Uh, other yeah, it's just clear that. Um, Black hadn't noticed. There must have been a moment. Let's go back five moves and see if. Uh... Yeah, here things still look calm, and then, uh, but that rook is already in danger. It's time to go. For, it's time to go home D6. to d six and c six and sit there. And maybe black's fine then. No, once you get your rook no, back. No, uh, white can play. Somehow, maybe okay. e, a rook uh, king e three, rook d six, maybe e five is possible. Rook d five. Rook d five. F four. And then I'll play knight e four next. This is quite unpleasant. Mm. I don't know. Maybe you have knight b six and uh, c four. C four. Then I have knight e four. Knight f six takes. I uh, think I also have here knight d three. Yeah, it's, uh, it's maybe a little unpleasant with this. Yeah. Knight. Well, if you get c four, I don't know. Maybe with mm. c four you have just enough because rook d three check is also there in the air. Right. But. White has ideas and uh, black doesn't, so this mm-hmm. can be unpleasant for black. Yeah, and it's just it's so easy to uh, underestimate knight d three in that last position. A five feels mm-hmm. like a normal move to make, correct? And to imagine yeah. that it's just lost after that. Yeah. Well, that is the end of round number seven. We have two more rounds to go. Mm. And uh, let's just have a look at the pairing of yes. the next round and then also the standings so that we know who's going to play against whom now. This is round number eight pairings. We have uh, Humpy versus Vantika. Okay, so Humpy f- f- must win for Humpy there. And I think Vantika Mus- looking a bit shaky. Yes. Mm. So, yeah. Hopefully she has the strength to you know, put this one aside and, and go for the next one. Right. Nana versus Anna is interesting, important. and yeah. yeah, because it's a very close fight yeah. between these two. And if Anna, you know, can sort of beat Nana, then her tournament improves. Also, 
tournament thrown wide open but nana is in amazing form yeah uh, maria versus harika also an important game yes maria has played well except uh, in the morning session mm. and uh, harika is extremely solid and well prepared so let's see if something interesting happens there and savita gets a shot at another world class player and now shenina mm. yep. and um, again she has to put aside the first game and mm. uh, land on her feet so to speak and vaishali versus olivia i think that was the game in the olympiad where vaishali lost that rook end game to olivia which was a very important point there so just go back to um Olivia against uh, Savita. The rook on the rook on d5. <laughs> Were you thinking all this? No, I suddenly had found a nice idea. So here already it's minute. over. Go yeah. back a bit. Instead of rook g8, I said uh, d4. Yes. So rook d4. Yeah, king b3, h3, rook f4. Though my yeah no no it's a problem. The bishop is not on b7. I thought it's on b7. And you wanted to do what if I wanted to go rook f five, if h one queen then uh, so maybe I have to go to b two or something, no but then bishop e five, yeah ah, so I, I wanted to go rook f five h one I wanted to say rook a five, um and with that bishop on b seven it might just about work yeah and if you go rook f five g f five h one ah anyway again the king is on b three which is the wrong square. So but if the king is on b two, a seven that wins because you don't have a check. Exactly, that was my thing. But <laughs> I cannot put it on b two because of bishop e five, so it doesn't work. Okay, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so it right, was a very good try then. D four uh, was yeah, a fantastic maybe. opportunity. I wonder if this just holds then. I suspect um, king b three. Is bishop f king b three? Ah, bishop f five is also possible because the bishop didn't need to go. No, but then I have the original plan of h three. Uh, oh, a seven, and then rookie bishop e four wins. So I have to go rook g eight, and then you play bishop e four. Yes, and ah, then you have to go bishop b eight. Bishop b eight, and then and rook h one wins. Yeah, and also and you collect the pawn. Right. Yeah. Um, so the, it's like it is uh, as hopeless as it was. Okay. But d four still uh, uh this. It's well, at least if a white plays rook d four, you're back in business. Right? Yeah, and this is maybe a draw, yeah. I mean, you maybe just that's too strong, but uh, okay. H three maybe maybe it is a draw. <laughs> it feels weird though. Yeah. It is. No, but suddenly my bishop it improved. Is? It is. Yeah, my bishop suddenly improved itself to B seven, and then all sorts of nice things started to happen. <laughs> so I came back to the position. It doesn't work. But with the king, with the king on B two, I would have had uh, A seven with a queen down, but uh, yeah, still winning. Nothing to do. Yes. <laughs> no checks. Like a study position. Yeah, this the way you thought right now is how the composers usually do it. Yes, yeah? very much. Like they would yeah. put this. Oh, this didn't work here. Let me change it here. Exactly. So have, have exactly. you ever like uh, tried your hand at composing? <laughs> maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I should. That would be great. Okay, and I think we also have the standings now here. So let's have a look at the standings after round seven. Uh, we have Nana Zagnitze at five and half, and Anna Ushenina oh. is just within a half a point distance. At yeah, because five. she was part of the group, uh, the trailing group, and she won as well. So Correct. she's keeping uh, track. And she's playing Savita in the yes. next round. Yes. So. She'll be very motivated to try and put pressure on. Yes. Very important round for the standings, and uh, Nana has a tough opponent. While yeah. in the Anna game, Anna is a favorite. So things could turn around going into the last round. And Humpy and Vaishali are on four and half, and Harika and Maria Muzichuk on four. Uh, technically, we can say like the top four are in with a chance right now. Mm -hmm. I guess having a one and half point deficit might be a bit too much to cover in two rounds. So it's it's a four way race mm -hmm. to the title perhaps. Yes, depends what I you know if Anna is able to. Mm. Uh, because she is experienced, she knows what to do. It's just her tournament yeah. isn't working out, but she could easily give some problems to Nana. And that can flip any time. We've often seen players who struggled at the beginning, at the end, try end up ruining somebody's tournament. Yes. Grichuk yes. comes to mind immediately. Believe me, it's always the people uh, they're gifting, they're gifting everything to everyone else, and they come to you and they totally <laughs> play well, and you think, why me? I think this is. <laughs> The question you start asking yourself. So yes, uh, that is one scenario. 
and by the way just to have a look at the last round pairing so that we know who is going to be nana's opponent it's going to be maria muzichuk in the last round against nana zagnitze mm-hmm. uh, it's olivia kiolbasa versus humpy anna ushenina with vaishali okay so that's also going to be an important clash there uh, and harika savita vantika anna muzichuk everything to play for as i think we are going to start off again in couple of minutes so nana's playing the two sisters in the final round anna and then maria <laughs> oh right right yeah very interesting and let's have a look at setting here and everything is getting ready for the final the penultimate round players already settling in some players coming in we're starting in what Three four minutes. Yeah, yeah. Everyone settling in. This this tournament, uh, you know, has been shaping up very well. And uh, like this year, there are many new improvements, like this flooring and all. So every little little improvements every year, and it's getting uh, very interesting. Like, yeah, I think it's now well established. I think the only Uh, improvement could be that uh, you have a slightly bigger stage and then you could accommodate both tournaments at the yeah. same time right um because I, it is uh, a bit hard on the girls to start 3 hours early hmm. um not i mean 12 is still a very reasonable time it's not uh, hmm. bundesliga 11 or something 10 but um, i'm sure they prefer to start a bit later as well Yeah, when you got three games coming up, some prep time in the morning, the more you can have it. On the other hand, they finish by three, so they have the evening to prepare. Yeah, it it does work out. Uh, I mean, you can have uh, you can even go for a walk, go to the gym, whatever. Mm. Then you have some time to prepare, and and then dinner and final right. re- recap and ching. And and twelve o'clock, you can do you can maybe not do a lot of work, but you can just uh, go over what you've prepared once in the morning, right. very relaxed. Yeah, if you have breakfast by nine nine thirty, you still have two hours for that, and yeah. uh, so it is actually a, it's not a bad uh, schedule. Anand, what was it like for you? Did you like preparing before? Do you like preparing before the games or finish it off the night before? How was the pre-game standard? Uh... Um, I thought Norway would be difficult for me because it was starting at five p.m. every day. Um. And I like to have two sessions. I I prefer a game starting at one thirty, finishing at seven eight, so I can do, get a little bit of work in the evening and then a little bit of work in the morning. Hmm. Uh, but in Norway, many rounds. If you finished your game and finished your Armageddon and you went home by seven seven thirty, you got a bit of that. You got chance to go for a walk, uh, do a bit of work, and you had the whole day the next day. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. So I was I would get in two hours in the morning. I'd have lunch. I'd have a nap. Uh, then I would uh, get ready, and I would still have an hour, hour and a half of prep before mm. I needed to leave. So that's also very comfortable. I was fine with uh, the one um, thirty start. Or um, Bundesliga, though, I I don't have time. So it's like um, you just don't have time in the morning and. Uh, Okay, it's just it's just the weekend, right? So yeah. that's not uh, a, a real comparison. Oh, whenever we think of an early start, I immediately think of Bundesliga. But <laughs> <laughs> it is true that our Saturday games start at two o'clock. It's only our Sunday games that start mm. at two o'clock. So. In general, you are a very. Early I think it's harder game. for the commentator. You're doing six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you prefer to have more boards uh, for few hours, but I don't know. I hand over the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thing for for us uh, commentating at least for me uh, it has been not so tough here because I commentate a lot at home but I don't know Tanya for you I I think I just really enjoy it it is tiring at the end but uh, also rapid and blitz I feel is has an adrenaline adrenaline and a rush of its own so you don't feel the tiredness yeah you know with the classical uh, match it can get a bit more tricky. But yeah, this is a lot, a lot of, of fun. We have a lot of waves when the game is ending, and then it again begins. And, and so you got lift off, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So King's yeah, so Indian classical can flare up and die down, and flare up and die down. So you have. 
By the I way, as it did, <laughs> my yeah. in game six, but anyway. <laughs> so we let's uh, begin with the leaders game first, shall we? Uh, Anna Muzichuk versus Nana Zagnitze, and Nana playing this uh, opening a lot, the Sicilian Taimano, and Bishop F four played. Isn't this what Richard Rapport played? Yep. In the candidates. Isn't it Duda against Rapport? Ah, and, then, and then Rapport used it somewhere else uh, right. later. Right. Uh, or it could be Rapport used it and then Duda used mm -hmm. it. So, But anyway, I think knight f6 uh, should be the main move. Mm. And knight yeah. b5, e5, yeah? Yeah. I think uh, a lot of, maybe a new direction developing here in the Sicilian. When does one start taking a line seriously? Now it must be like when a new idea is played by a top player already, it's serious stuff or maybe... Yes. Even even the really silly lines, I mean, uh, there are so many joke lines they play and so on. I think even those, they're quite uh, interesting to try and uh, study a bit. Mm. Uh, basically, the attitude, I'll figure out figure it out at the board is a dangerous attitude. Mm. Mm. Uh, you, you often underestimate that even simple positions, it takes some effort to Correct. follow it in. So it might be worth uh, studying. And, and what, what's the problem with studying it? It enriches your chest a little bit more. So, you know, what's so terrible about that? Um, I think for people who love chess, that's very much fun. Like, you know, you're trying new things. But I think those who consider it as work, they are like, oh, again, I have to try new life. Yes, but actually you get lines where you will make a lot of progress. Uh, unlike, um, you know, the some line hidden at the end of the marshal. These these lines, there will be solutions, there will be action all the time. So that is fun in itself. Right. Okay, so this is just uh, starting off and I think uh, Nana has gone into a big thing. Like, as Tanya has been mentioning that she does take her time in the opening. Is this the current position? Or? Yes. yes. Okay, because, ah, so it's our moves which got entered, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, now she played some knight d4, queen d4 she played. Oh, that's strange. d6. Ooh. Ah, okay. Okay. Can't believe that. Yeah, this is... Why is that the case? Why is our eval bar giving such a big edge to white? But I don't think it's very easy for like a woman to figure this out. What's going on. Okay, this is amazing. So what the computer is saying is knight c3, mm -hmm. e5. e5. I mean, by the way, I rest my case about uh, preparing these things. So, <laughs> so much fun, yeah, yeah, bishop takes e5. Wow. D takes e5, bishop b5 check, bishop d7. And now queen takes e5 check. Right. So queen e7 first, because otherwise I castle long. Okay. And now bishop takes d7 check, forcing you to king walk out with your queen. Oh. And then long, long castle. castle. And, uh, oh, wow. King c8. c8. And would you find queen h3? Queen g3? <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's... But is that the so only move? you can't no, go into this move. line if you don't see queen g3, right? No. I, my, my, my point is, um, if you're disciplined about uh, checking these lines, then you won't make a move like 94 and d6. Mm. Because 94 and d6 already felt wrong to me because uh, 94 is usually an idea based on 97 c6 coming. You might not have that time here. Right. But uh, apparently knight c3. So if um, but Anna Maria then knows a theory, sorry, it's Anna. Anna knows yeah. a theory, then uh, this is going to be interesting. The last position, even if you in your calculation don't see queen g3, just seeing long castle, king goes to c8, would you just take that decision and say that there has to be something here? It's chaotic, but uh, it's true that there are multiple uh, shots. There's, I mean, my obvious idea would be queen f5. Hmm. Uh, but queen d4 is a good shot as well. Sometimes just a calm move. But, but the question comes back, would you enter this line? Would you enter this exactly. line saying queen d4? Uh, you might calculate everything, but you don't have any value. Hmm. Whereas if you know in advance... Uh, this position is plus five, then you at least think, okay, then I, I need to look uh, for the, some move which keeps that. Mm -hmm. If you don't know you're better, then adds a lot of uncertainty to your decision. Mm. You will uh, 
you might calculate it see everything at a high level but you don't know whether you should enter it or not which mm. is the most interesting piece of information that exactly. should have come out of it mm. so i think studying new lines is a no brainer <laughs> because first of all they're more fun there's you're discovering stuff for the first time instead of just going over long lines and uh, it expands your horizon i think uh, when i grew up uh, bishop f4 was not even a move in the pandemic mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Because it's always... I, if I can tell you that I, I did a big uh, study of the time on on various occasions. I do not have Bishop of Four Man <laughs> till it cropped up recently. I even have Knight B5 D6 Bishop of Four. Mm-hmm. But Bishop of Four never occurred to me. So it's uh, this modern computerized thing. Really. But now you can prepare it in a day, right? Like not completely, yes. but at least substantial. Amount. But then if you do a thousand line like this, can you remember everything that you need to? Isn't it? That's the That's trade-off, different. right? Always. By the way, the most natural human move, like because e5 is coming, is to go back like queen d2 or something. Which is probably better as well, but uh, I mean, it's why we're still getting a huge advantage for white. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so that, that means that's a bad decision by Nana. Nana. Yeah. Um, because I think after knight c3, if you don't play e5, then you're just losing the d6 pawn, maybe. Long castle and then it's over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So actually, this is big trouble for black, directly. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see if Anna can, uh, you know, uh, find some really good moves here and score an upset based on the tournament situation. Uh, and now here we see Vaishali against Olivia Kiol Basa. Another and, London. <laughs> but something like F6 has been played at. So Knight F3, it was the London, D4, D5, Bishop F4, C5, E3, takes, takes. Knight c6, bishop g4, knight d2, f6. And h3, bishop h4. Very risky play by black. No? Yes. I mean, first of all, c3, e5, I have g4. So I'm not sure what she's aiming for. I have g4. And if you play bishop g4, hg4, uh, ef4, bishop d2 is huge. King f1. It's, it's just you know, a huge advantage for it. But this is so quick, yeah. Like what you just said, e5, g4. Yeah, so that's the start. And then after c3, you can play e6, which might be reasonable because your bishop now has a square on f7. And then uh, ideally, you want to punish f6 with c4. Mm. But then we have to get into some calculation, maybe g4 and c4. <clears throat> but g4, bishop, g6, you have to watch out for knight b4 but i think g4 c6 um, g4 and c4 should you be have queen a4 though yeah. knight a4 is not immediate knight b4 is not immediately a problem yeah also maybe i'm overestimating because after e6 i don't see why if i can play it without g4 that's even better by the way people in the chat mentioning that anna did play knight c3 wow oh, big, oh, this big, is big. going to be a nice. big moment nice good job by anna I, you know, I, I think Nana will calculate this line with e5 and knowing how I feel, just seeing that king c8 position, she will not be happy to go for just that position. But then what will she do? Exactly. Is there an she's alternative? In, she's in trouble already. Maybe she'll go f6 or what? <laughs> with the idea of e. <laughs> that looks so hot. But when, when Anna plays a move like knight c3, that's already, you know, you... I mean, there's bishop b5 coming but as well. impressive is that she clearly found it at the board or yeah. Uh, yeah. was jogging her memory. Um, mm. I suspect because the time she took it, something like, wait, I Four know minutes. this is supposed to be bad. So it must be bad. Let me try and figure it out. And then mm. uh, sometimes you know the answer and then you guess the way. Right. Uh, In those endings, right? Sure. Where you know it's winning, but you don't know how. You... So this is a forcing line. Yeah, you can't go king e7 with knight d5. Yeah, it's all forced. Yeah, knight e7, long castle. No, 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 no. Ah, sorry, uh, yeah. first, check. first check. No. And the difference is, is there a difference? Queen e5. Ah, check. bishop e7, bishop king, e7 f8. king f8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bishop e7, I'm thinking queen takes g7. Bishop, bishop f6, bishop b5. Check our bishop d7 takes queen takes and then queen protect. You don't have time for long castle, yeah. yeah? Yeah, so we very important. To... We have to go bishop mm-hmm. b5 check now. 
Okay, let's come back to this game in a bit. Let's go to uh, Anna Ushanina versus Savita because Anna is just half a point behind uh, behind Nana Zagnitze. And look at her play here. F5. Look at Anna's heart rate. 142. <laughs> and Savita is at 95. F5 on the board. Yesterday we were uh, talking with, uh, I think Nihal was around and he uh, he said, oh, the heart rate is interesting. And then we mentioned that his heart rate is always in the 120s. And he was already thinking how to sort improve of get it, it, how to improve his heart rate, bring it below. Maybe he'll start exercising and all. <laughs> you know, that's how he <laughs> began thinking about it. So F5. This seems like a very interesting, generally at least one of the bishops is Pian Shattered here. Both bishops are on e2 and e7. But it's yes, and the know. thing is it's kind of... Um... Ah, she didn't go d4, so Anna got an e5. Of course, the thing is if you go d4 here, then you get cd4, knight d4, e5. Mm. And then you get the Kalashnikov. Without um, knight b5 being possible. Mm. I mean, white still plays knight c2 or whatever. But... Mm. Right, so here, this is the life position right now. She went knight d5, knight f6, and I think just the kind of position Anna Ushanina needs in this. Oh, yeah, she wants game. to keep the game alive. Yeah, very true. Okay, going to Humpy versus Vantika. Important game here. Humpy with the white getting her kind of a position, space in the center. Very much. She's going to try and uh, get a good Kings Indian position. Okay, D1, Bishop E2, nothing happening. And then slowly mm. also wait for mistakes. So mm. this could be... Um, because black is cramped. Black will have to lash up at some point and we want to be ready for this. Should black do like E5, F5 here? Maybe. Kings Indian style. I don't like e5, but computer says f5 is good. Ooh. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. With e5, oh, it wants to go knight e5. Right. That's a, and then f4 as well slips in. So. Mm. Oh, you don't nice. have time for it. Oh, very nice. Mm. Mm. But what does it say after that? f5, you can play e5, e5. It's possible. Some microscopic. Yeah, uh, you know, when we were at the camp with Humpy, the one thing that I noticed about her is in these kind of positions, she has she was so quick and fast at just knowing where to place the pieces. It comes very naturally to her, these maneuvers, moving pieces back and forth to get them at the right spot. And uh, she was able to solve those kind of positions with such ease. For me, that was really fascinating to watch. While, you know, very often, at least as a player, I tend to look for something a little more forcing or direct. Uh, and yeah, it was quite nice to watch that understanding that she has. Right. Yes, I mean, typically it's also a generation thing. She's uh, uh, pre-computer still, and I think her thinking is slightly pre-computer as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just she's a very strong. Player. Yeah, no, but the point. I, my point is this: um, you give them healthy positions that they are familiar with, and the moves will come naturally. Chaotic ones where the thing, other stuff they struggle. I mean, I, I struggle as well with uh, some people in very, very chaotic positions. Uh, whereas others uh, feel at home in, in the chaotic ones and uh, um, in simple positions don't know how to go forward. So it could be stylistic. I wasn't uh, particularly uh, <laughs> implying that you were not. But anyway. <laughs> but you know, this is, uh, I know Magnus has spoken about this quite a bit, this anti-young player chess. What, we have some? She went d5. e5. Okay. Okay, so a3, f5 and b4, and let's go for c5. f5, e4. Okay, let's go f4, g5, no? What did Humpy do, by the way? Playing somewhere. As a Kings Indian player, you're just always wanting to get this f5, f4 in. Yeah. No, this is a live position. No, she okay. hasn't played her move yet. Oh, no, she played actually something. She's played something, I thought, yeah. And Vantika's move, yeah. Which Maybe we don't Bishop have an G4. But so oh, no, she's gone Bishop, Bishop E2. E2. Ah. 
What does she want after F5? She wants to play F3. F3 yeah. But H3 has already been played. And that could lead to like serious attack, right? Like, I mean, normally G5, Knight F3. Well, so F5, F3, F4, F Bishop E, F2, G5, A3, H5, B4, Knight F6, and you get G4, and then. In these positions, is there a possibility to take and go F4 directly here? Or is that bad? Is I bad? would. I'm not. Uh, no, yeah. Really sure, but I think E F G F F four. I might consider E F four, Bishop F four ninety four because I also have knight G six ready. Yeah, I go yeah. Bishop D seven, Queen F six, Rook A eight, you know the typical stuff. So yeah, yeah we will go F three for sure. Just keep I, everything. I don't know. Maybe she will take and go F four. Okay, so while Humpy is thinking, let's quickly go to Anna versus Nana. Oh, BD7? Yeah, she's given the pawn. Wow, so Nana did n saw this bishop e5 line, didn't like it, and this means that but she ends up... Line. Yeah, it is. And a healthy one, yeah? But why is Anna thinking? Is she looking for more? So bishop d6, a, is there some pin bishop that C6, you can... Bishop c6, right? She'll play. A long castle. Correct. Yeah, a long pawn. castle. Even f3. And I think now you must take, yeah. take, take... Take and this is like just king e7 you also, for free, yeah. yeah. Rook, uh, d2, rook oh, d4, God. rook d2, whatever. And we would and just then f3, and you know, it's all nice. We were just talking about Anna making that, yeah, moment for her in this game. This and is what is that? I think most likely Anna will convert this, and then we'll be in a situation where the tournament is wide open. Going into the last round, <laughs> oh, that and by the way, I think there are tie breaks, right? If the players end in the same score, we'll get a confirmation I mean, on I, it. Yeah, I think we'll confirm. But last year we had seen Arjun and Levon did play the tie break. Levon won that in the blitz, uh, the tie in the, break in the blitz. Yeah, yes, yeah. not in the rapid. Ah, but... uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a tie break in the rapid. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Vaishali versus Olivia. Nothing. She's gone three. Gone three. three. So, uh... Uh, hoping for e5, but I think e6 is coming. This e5, g4, is it a typical idea or? Um, because, I mean, I just I felt mean, like f6 you... itself is not very typical, but I, what I want is, uh, I like this thing. It, um, you can take like this. Yeah, what I, why I immediately like this position is because white has c3, d4, and black has this loose pawn on d5. Okay. And when you have the loose pawn on d5, I think that pawn on f6 just feels bad. Mm. Because bishop d3, queen c2 is going to put a lot of pressure on h7 and so on. Mm. So that's what I immediately liked about this. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> okay. But e6 and bishop d6 and knight g7, it's, it's a change for instance. Mm. Okay. Exchange caro. A exchange caro. I think like that f6 line. I mean, they do play f6. Right. And now, uh, instead of knight f6, they sometimes go knight g7, so they're Correct. trying different strategies. It's okay. worrying that Anna is thinking, thinking about this. What is she thinking about? <laughs> Maybe long castle or... But then e5. And... Oh, then it's... Then takes, takes, queen e5, queen bishop e... c... queen e7. What is my great move? I don't think there's a great move. Queen g3, queen like... C7. <laughs> queen c7. Oh, wow. So it continues, yeah? Oh, she's gone for bishop d6. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, why even bother? Because right. uh, there's the free pawn sitting there. Yeah, so Anna Muzichuk has just taken a pawn against Nana Zagnitze. By the way, after bishop c6, uh, nothing wrong with e5, but then you have to calculate knight at 6 and knight, d, knight e7 and things like that. So, with knight f5. Long castle, right. exchange right. everything. Right. You're a pawn up. Keep yeah. it simple. Happy life. Uh, and uh, going to Maria Muzichuk versus Harika. Oh, they have come into an endgame, which looks... Alapin alert. <laughs> oh, but e5. But this is very mysterious for me. What is queen takes d4 and coming back? Maybe she could go knight f3, right, instead of queen d4? Yeah. In fact, uh, yeah, the confidence is uh, black is even slightly better. So, uh, very strange decision. Hmm. So I can't go queen a4 check here because of bishop d7. Queen b4 no check here. Yeah. Okay, so here uh, Harika gets a good position out of the opening. Looks like everyone's well prepared against the Alapin now. Yeah. It's one of the things to look out for. 
सविता वर्सेस एना उशेनीना सविता डिड टेक ऑन एफ फाइव एंड हैज गॉन नाइट एच फोर इन दिस पोजीशन अटैकिंग द बिशप बिशप गोस बैक नो नो व्हाट आई व्हाट शी इज एनिंग फॉर मे बी बिशप बिशप Rook G8. Then knight G6 to E7. Then I'm winning the table. Oh, knight E6, oh. knight F6 is hanging. So brutal, <laughs> stunned fair. So, uh, but instead of Rook G8, I have to defend the F6 knight. Yeah, King F7, something like that. Mm. And it feels a bit speculative. Rook didn't give us for white. Yeah. So maybe in another, but I don't understand knight H4. Bishop D7. If she takes on f6, she has to come back. <clears throat> but why not? She must want to knight take d7. And why not d7? Like you could also keep. She has gone bishop h5 check. Yes, yes, she has played. Okay, Savita going all in there, or maybe g6. I think she will sack. Or oh, will she come back? Bishop g6, g6, knight g6. But you can't even come back. I mean, no, once you've committed yeah. g6, because knight d5 is coming. Also, you have Savita, so you won't come back. Yeah, bishop h5, uh, g6, knight e7, queen e7, bishop uh, f e2 or something is a bailout. I don't think g6 is such a weakness that black will suffer for this. Mm. So queen e7, bishop e2. I'm sure there's something nice for black. But I think knowing Savita, she will she sack. She'll go for it. Oh, she will sack. Yeah. Very possible. But Anna is thinking right now. She yeah, she has no other choice but to go g six. Uh, uh, King of eight is thing, but I would not do it. It's a bit risky <laughs> because now f four in these kinds of moves. Yeah. Okay, so this is going here, and Humpy Wantika. Oh, this happened. What you were discussing? Uh, the so same thing. F four. She did go e f g f f four e f. Bishop f4, knight e5. Oh, this knight e5 is queen on the board. Queen b2, bd7. Oh, now maybe it's later. Yes, I mean she's saying a, a knight uh, d4 and hmm. uh, maybe something landing on e6. But but we can take this, no? Take take. Uh, and then knight g6 and play on pure uh, dark squares, yeah. Right. So cb5, knight g6. g6. Maybe so, bishop g5. But yeah, queen d7 is okay. Is g6, but mm. it's not very solid. Then mm. very structurally solid for black. Okay, so good play by Vantika here. Also, Hambi. Uh, it's going to be a close match. Maria versus uh, Arika is still there. We we just saw it. Uh, and Anna Nana Zagnin says same as discussed, going in that direction with f3. Tournament is heating up. <laughs> Both players about five minutes on the clock, so but there's still work to be done to convert. No, way, this, not, yeah. Yeah. I don't think this will be tough. No, you think I? It's always and tough to win bishop a game. E2, I think. Rook D one, then maybe exchange the rooks. I think bishop E two, rook D one. As I say, B three, king B two, A four. Yeah. It's you got. It's a whole free pawn. Yeah. <laughs> it's just no way. It's... No, if Nana saves this position, then she must win the tournament. Like she has had many chances in this event. Like Humpy uh, drawing that game, or Harika being clearly better out of the opening, and then that ending in a draw. But if this ends in a draw, then okay, give the trophy to her. Yeah, like, this, <laughs> this this is, is a full pawn up right out of the opening, and Bishop E two played Sagar as you were mentioning. Mm. Double up the rook on the D file. But Black could uh, play G five H five G four, and you never know. Some. Yeah, I'm not going hope. to fight. Yeah. <laughs> But still, B three king B two, and we also get going. Maybe even B four and king B two. By the way, Vashali's yeah. position lot has happened. Okay. Oh. Oh, she took on E five. What is she doing? Just G four. Oh, she so played strong. E five. Yeah. Yeah. So this is something that she's going to learn today from. <laughs> Because this. Okay, she wants knight takes E five, but then castles, and then this is a nice initiative. On the board and shot castle here. Yeah. Played immediately. You have to go for this. This is getting. 
very hmm. yeah but look at the position nobody is yeah. counting pawns right now very chaotic no very much i would think that uh, black, white is the one under a bit of pressure but white can always long castle so maybe yeah, and f4 so it's also yeah. possible i don't know so do you start with long castle or knight f3 or what or do you you i mean gh5 doesn't feel right here gh5 bishop e5 right? yeah then i could long castle it's not much of a pawn but it's a pawn bishop e5 now i castle long mm -hmm. if you play something like bishop f4 yeah. i can try and move step aside king b1 uh try to get, uh, play knight b3 bishop g2 i mean d5 is also weak i don't know if uh, bishop d2 and uh, knight e4 but maybe yeah. you take queen yeah but maybe i take with the queen and queen takes d5 mm -hmm. okay i think i'm gonna okay yeah Head thank back. you so much she, she, that yeah. was amazing yes. and i think while you were here we learned so much and also <laughs> the tournament is wide open now so uh, let's see what what happens yeah i mean technically it is wide open because <laughs> nana is in big trouble yeah. but uh, we'll see if she can uh, her miracle run of saving lost positions continues, <laughs> continues. <laughs> so. and she if you have time maybe in the evening uh, for the open section if you could join us that would be great yeah i'll definitely come back again for great. the open section yeah. thank okay. you okay. thank you so much thanks Bye. Bye. And that was uh, Vishy Anand joining us, and it was so amazing. Tanya, please tell me what did you learn today? I just, you know, every time Anand comes here, I feel like I want to play chess. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's... and you know, I was, I was the the one of the things that I have an advantage over you. I mean, you have a different kind of advantage. You are learning a lot. Is I'm whatever he's saying, I'm. able to see the engine mm. and he's so accurate so quickly yeah like most of the times he's just talking about the top engine moves oh there is d3 but oh c3 is winning and the engine is suddenly moving the bar i mean yeah. what is there an engine in his head he is so fast and you know with the advantage that i have over that is that i can get a complete insight and actually and because i think he really enjoys analyzing yes. without seeing the computer moves yeah and even when the computer says something is wrong he wants to figure out why is it exactly. wrong not just acha this is the top engine line let's look at this so to so he has the best of the worlds here like analyzing without an engine with oh you my God. and then seeing the evaluation okay this is wrong let's analyze again so <laughs> honestly sagar that we have was the best just of both the worlds chat, also we are so lucky i mean this age that we live in where we can have these Uh, you know legends come and commentate and yeah. share their insights yeah. with us explain concept i mean bishop e5 d5 breaking this down for us it This happening one, no, on the board yeah the, bishop, the nana what board. i learned so much tania here was that e5 he instantly within a second said g4, g4. and i was like no i can never think g4 why because my pawns are getting doubled here on the h file and He just explained it so well. Now I'll never forget this. That getting this long diagonal and pawn on f6 is very important and so on. And you remember that end game from the previous round with keeping that bishop on f4. Yes, yes. With that opposite yes. color bishop, finding this study-like composition and how we were discussing the standings and all, but his mind was still working mm -hmm. on that position. He's like, wait a second, let's go back there. <laughs> it is. It's like an insight, like a peek into the mind of a genius. Correct. Absolutely. And we are very lucky. We are very. privilege i think all of you watching live are also uh, i'm sure enjoyed this tanya when is your next tournament maybe the world rapid and bhai jaldi khel le <laughs> play play after this tournament ends play something fly somewhere and so play inspired. so that you Every can make time. a third gm norm <laughs> I wish, but honestly, he is. Uh, you know, also the way he discusses lines, how he explains them, so much to learn, and you can see his greatness. Sagar, like you mentioned, he was analyzing without the engine, and you were playing it out, and you could see it's all the top moves. Mm. I know, I know, and I, I think uh, uh, it's amazing, and that's why, guys, we all enjoy when Vishy comes here. We are able to learn a lot, and I'm sure all the people in the chat who. who truly are these chess lovers yeah. are going to have a complete ball like someone said the only thing better than wishy 
analyzing is him seeing him play chess you know yeah. that these are the two things by the way tanya quickly going into the game maria muzichuk has drawn with harika already i had a feeling sagar you know seeing the way the opening went it didn't feel as if maria played very ambitiously in this alapin uh, which she also pointed out that a strange decision with the queen trade where you go queen d4 queen d1 what do you really want and uh, after d5 everything gets liquidated in right. the center right. and it just felt like an easy game where both players were happy with the result yeah i think uh, maria might not be particularly happy but harika just equalized so easily she had no choice and uh, what about uh, anna oh wow sagar we've got this position on the board in in uh, vestali let's go game. quickly to that this is what we were looking at this All of this has happened. Yeah. Knight e5, short castle, long castle was played. Mm. Rook e8 takes on h5. Now she's thinking whether to go rook e5 because it has the advantage of also attacking the h5 pawn and picking it up immediately. She took with the bishop. Because after you take with the bishop, it's the time to let's go. Disco divane. Acha. Oh, sorry. Disco. Uh huh. But of course, where Charlie will imagine, spot this. Imagine that Vishy just walked out oh my and God. is going oh. through that zone where he's watching that television where it's on mute, and he's seeing, and he's seeing us do this, he's and he's what? like, "What, what, <laughs> what just, just happened, happened there? What pretty, have I done to that?" Pretty normal <laughs> when I was there. <laughs> But she goes queen f three because where Charlie says to Olivia, uh, she spots it and she <laughs> says that. दिल में मेरे है दर्द डिस्को दर्द डिस्को मुझे लगा समथिंग इन दिस पोजिशन एंड आई थिंक वैशाली हैज अल एडवांटेज Vasali has a small. I mean, she does have a pawn, an extra pawn. But Sagar again, whatever the eval bar says here, I think it's a very complex position. Opposite side castling. Black has an open c file. There's always a d4 break in the air. Queen a5 will jump in. C3 will always be a target. If the knight on d2 moves, knight from e4 will jump in, putting more pressure on c3. Mm. White meanwhile will try to build pressure on, on the, the king side. File, yeah? Lucky for me. Well, lucky for Olivia, she's got a bishop on e5, which will be a great defender of the g7 pawn. Thank you. Correct. So I think I whatever the eval bar says from a human perspective, it is game on. Absolutely, Tanya. I think uh, humans are afraid of sacrifices like bishop takes c3, and so here uh, Vaishali has to play carefully. I'm very very interested to see what is going on with Humpy and Vantika Agrawal, and as we can see, Humpy. Has got her bishops here. Vantika has got the f5 weakness. She wants to maybe switch her rook to e8, and but there's no e7 square. Oh, she takes on f5. She takes the pawn. Tanya, why does? Makes sense. You've got a pawn hanging. Pick it up. Why not? But the big question is, what does Vantika want after rook f5? Uh, because because already black was a pawn up after queen d7. She did get the b5 pawn. And now after rook f five, I think rook f five, queen f five, rook f eight. Does that work? But then you've got e6, queen e six check, and maybe I can pick up c seven. Let's just have that on the board because I don't see the follow up or uh, no f one check is dangerous. But let's show that rook f eight, queen e six check, king moves. I can take on g six here, bishop g six, h g six, and. And while we oh, all wow, think, wait, wait, we all would think taking chat, this pawn. Chat, 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 let's chat, ask chat, our chat. chat what is the best move here, guys? Why to play? Let's have some training now that you all are trained by Mr. Anand. Exactly. After that session with Anand, chat. This is your question. Why to play here? How do you continue and uh, channel your inner Anand? Mm. Inner Anand is basically. Uh, inner happiness. That's what I meant. Oh, nice. Because there's only one Vishy Anand. I don't think we can channel him. Right. It's impossible. Right. But you know what I mean, Sagar. After this position, there is a brilliant move which would actually finish the game on the spot. And let's see if the chat is awake after that session. Well, chat is very much alert here, and they have found the move. Rook c4. Well done, all of you who found this move. The rook swings over. 
from the queen side to the king side and it's a checkmate it's a checkmate mate because you can't even fight it checkmate mate nice tania very cool thanks oh by the way what, what just happened here queen c5 check oh they traded queens oh and Takes. let's see one more question for chat coming up rook into c5 chat you have a pre pawn should white pick this up or not oh. tagar Wow, guys, find it now. Tanya is really in this trainer mode. Tactics training. Black to play. What is the move? Well, Vid, thank you so much for your super chat saying we are here to distract you. Sagar, <laughs> are you? Thank you. So I have a feeling if you guys found Rook C4, at least a hundred of you should find this next move. Yes. At least a hundred of you. At least, थोड़ा ज़्यादा हो गया तानिया. अभी बहुत लोग नहीं देख रहे. ओवर Okay, as you mentioned this, Tanya, the number of people who are just sending in their moves is growing by the minute, and the people who have sent this, one hundred and thirty people already, guys. That's good enough. Uh, you can still we can reach one hundred, two hundred here, but. गुड जॉब ऑल दो फाउंड ऑल दो मुझे थोड़े टाइम के बाद लगता है ऐसे होता है ना जैसे क्लास में हो ये राइट आंसर है आई ऑल्सो कॉपी एंड राइट इट डू थिंक दैट हैपेंस पीपल आर लाइक क्या बीडी फॉर बीडी फॉर बीडी फॉर चल रहा है लेट्स पुट दैट बीडी फॉर वो बट नो आई थिंक मेनी ऑफ देम आर नाउ स्ट्रांग इनफ टू फाइंड दिस वन समटाइम्स व्हेन इट्स अ टफ मूव दैट मे हैपन दिस इज इजी सो हंपी गोस किंग एच1 एंड आई थिंक तानिया Vantika might be able to hold this position, although it looks scary because the bishop is landing on e6. But if we see our bishop is controlling this diagonal, so the king will be safe on h8 or maybe g7. It's a beauty bishop. It's a cutie bishop. It's a cutie bishop. It's a cutie. It's a nice one. It's a cutie. The bishop is uh, helping in attack, in defense, multi role. You know, it's not easy these days that people can do so much. You know, either they are, uh, they're just. focus like specialists it's the world of specialists but this bishop is like i'll help my king i'll yeah. attack i'll do everything it's like a multi talented bishop hmm. you're you're supporting your own king you're stopping your opponent's king from coming into play so the bishop on d4 is like amrita okay doing so many things and uh, now while the knight on g6 is, is <laughs> hopefully it's not me <laughs> the knight on g6 you know it's just so Goda is very respectable. Okay, don't. don't I, mean, I agree. Don't disrespect the Goda. I'm just saying it. I'm saying it with you know in the best way possible because only if you can have a single mindedness, that's the path to success. Correct. And I think King on H1 Tanya is. Uh, <clears throat> No, let's not go into that no, King on H1. No, please tell me what is the King on H1? Who does the King on H1 remind you of? Are you trying to say the king on h1? By Ampia's ten me? seconds, <laughs> ten seconds left on the board. King h1 pe is kind of boxed in, but has one way to get out. And once it's out, Tanya, it will be a very powerful piece. Goes g4. Finds another Now. way to get out. King g2. King f3. King e4. Kadam, kadam. Badha eja. H4, h5. Okay, <laughs> Leja. B five, but Tanya, the queen side pawns are coming down the board. Imagine I go B four, then C four, B takes C four, B three, A B three, A two, A one. Okay, that A1. is scary. That is that is the real kadam kadam. Ek kadam kadam, badha ye ja ja dukh ke geet gaaye ja. A pawn queen ho raha hai. Ye zindagi hai promotion ki. To bus ab. क्वीन साइड को बचाए जा <laughs> अरे बाबा क्या ही अंतरा दिया है ओके सो हम्पी हैज टू बी केयरफुल ऑफ दिस प्लान राइट बी4 c4 b3 इज कमिंग इन एक्चुअली एंड आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड अ वे सागर हाउ कैन यू फाइट इट देयर इज दिस मूव बिशप d2 फॉर एग्जांपल इमेजिन यू गो b4 एंड व्हाइट कैन पोटेंशियली प्ले बिशप d3 ओके बिशप d3 इज सुपर नाइस बिशप d3 एंड जस्ट स्टॉप दिस प्लान 
so can i start off no but then if i do this and b4 then you come to c2 so basically my light Somehow. squared bishop which doesn't have anyone sort of opposing it will take control of the queen side while white's king just has to reach e4 this bishop is like you when i go outside it'll come and sit on this chair and start making arrows oh so nice right now it's but also hold the fort together yes, very much very why important. would you not say that That's why would you say arrows finishing. why would you not say that it would finishing. come back it's very important making too. arrows is very important so, also king g7 hmm. let's just point out vantika down to 20 seconds humpy down oh, to 15 blunder seconds. king g2 h6 is coming somehow i don't know oh knight h4 knight h but bishop d8 h6 bishop d8 knight f4 knight d5 you lose a pawn has humpy blundered and let me tell you chat she played bishop humpy he played at 6 blundering is no, 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 not no, no, something no. she didn't play she didn't play she played knight e5 now oh. at 6 was not found by vantika that was actually and even bishop f6 was winning somehow but she plays knight e5 and after bishop f4 b4 bishop c2 now vantika is uh, i mean humpy is still in the game and may well win this Okay, Sagar. Let's move on to the Anna Nana game. By the way, that's the only other game remaining. Very important one. It's a knight pawn ending, and what is going on here? Because white has an H passer now. Mm -hmm. Even though the pawns are equal, because black has a double pawn on B four B five, it doesn't count. So essentially, white still has an extra pawn. Remember, when it's a knight pawn end game, the rook pawns are the most difficult for knights to defend. So the H pawn is actually it's... not a pawn. It's A super pawn. A dragon. It's a super pawn. It's a super. It's pawn. a super duper pawn. And, and Tanya, look at this knight f five. If you take on b three, h six already is queening because after king f seven, h seven. Because the knight on f five guards the g seven square. Your king is not in time to defend it. And if you take on f five, then e f five is already a winning pawn end game. But then that means this is busted. You can't take on f five. You have done. to move your knight somewhere. You have to probably give a check. And if you go knight e two, I attack your knight. Follow it up with h six. What black wants She is going knight e five. No. She wants knight e five and come back with the knight to f seven or g six, defending the h eight pawn. Mm. But Tanya, this will be slow death after king g four, king h five, king h six. The king will get in from here. The knight may revolve itself to pick up these pawns. Sagar, it's happening so... as we speak. Let's get up to date Ooh. with our live board. We have this position: knight d four check played. The king comes back to f seven. White can start picking up the other pawns, but first you have to stop king g six. So uh, Anna does that with the move king f five. Now she yeah. can simply also pick up b five. Yeah, just go knight b five. Yeah, I think eight seven should also be winning here. Yeah, but what's the line? King g seven. Uh, and then knight e six, king h seven, king f six. Yeah, somehow she's going for something. She's gone for knight. C six. Okay, very strong. Also taking here, then going to d five, knight h four. But you know, Nana is a very resourceful fighter in the end game. So let's see if she manages to create lot of problems. But the problem is with such few pieces on the board. It's a very direct line saga. Tanya, a yeah. big result is Anna Ushenina beating Savita right now. At this point, we have a leader in Anna Ushenina, and if this result happens as per what. The current situation is we will have a new leader of the tournament. Going into the final round, we'll have a big turnaround as Anna will take a half point lead. It looks like that's where this is headed. Currently, Nana is completely busted. A miracle is what she needs to save this end game. Correct. And knight d8. By the way, uh, let's go to Humpy has drawn with Vantika. All right, that's a fair result, wow, Sagar. Wow, that's it a was big result for Vantika. For Vantika, but in the position that we had, I think it makes a lot of sense that this one ended in a draw. Vantika kept her cool against uh, Humpy. Not an easy thing to do, but it's all eyes on Anna versus Nana. Eight seven has been played. If you take King D eight, let's point out the line, Sagar, with some arrows here. King D eight, King F five. You hit the knight. Knight H eight is the only move. You go King F six. Yeah. You go king f6, king e8. This reminds me of Pragna Nanda Nakamura. Is this a draw? King g7, knight f7. Yes. Yeah. E5. E5. King. King e7. E7, e6. King e6. e6. Ah. 
Wait, has this just turned around? This is a draw now, Tanya. What? Can we please zoom into Anna and Nana? Can we have a full screen view of the two players right now? Yes, very much so. But this is unbelievable. How did Nana Zagni they save this? I can't believe it. I cannot believe this. Sagar, to me, this screams championship luck. But let me also say, even if Nana draws, she ties. With Anna Oshanina going into the last round, but what a save this is! If that happens, I was just mentioning she she needs a miracle to survive this one. Oh, I mean, everyone thought so, Tanya. Even uh, Vishy was like, "This is very tough to save after she, she lost," and I was like, "Obviously, this is not at all easy to save." And look at this is what wins you tournaments. All right, so e five has been played. Black needs to be precise. Do you go? How do you how do you save this? If you go knight f seven, I want to go e. Oh my god! It's a stalemate. It's a stalemate. Is that the only way after King F8? One no, minute, one minute. Let me let me just show it also to the viewers because right now we are at this broadcast board. Wow. It, let's see. Let's let's switch to this view so that we can also have the bar and people can see what's happening. She plays it's it. Okay, and King F8. She plays it. Chant. What? Knight F7. What a move! Because if you take here, it's a stalemate. Oh, pretty, pretty. And if you go e7, then king e8 is a draw are in are this are position. This is game over. What a turnaround this was! Unbelievable chat. I am in shock. I'm completely shook right now. Everyone shocked, Tanya. Everyone is just thinking, what did? How did Nana Zagnitze change the course of this game? Unbelievable. And now what? King e7 only move, and yeah, if you go King g7, King e7 all oh, stalemate on the board. Oh Nana my Zagni God, we Zagni. have a stalemate, <laughs> and this match, epic she match, ends this. in a draw. How did this happen, Sagar? I don't know. It's just like, wow. I think there are two things here. We can of course say that Nana was lucky, or you know, we can put it that way. But luck is not the best way to describe this. She was tenacious. She kept trying to look for her chances. She never gave up, even when you know we we thought that this is all but done. The engines were like plus eight, plus nine. She kept on fighting, and that's her reward here. Well, as they say, you make your own luck on the chessboard, and that's what we are witnessing. But this was just a very different case i feel sagar i mean this was lost from move 8 right. you lose the d6 pawn for nothing anna seemed to flawlessly convert it to victory but at the very end is when it changed and i want to draw your attention sagar to where that happened it's time for tanya's breakdown let's go so it was everything was going fine for anna up till a certain point and it was on move number 44 or something Shall we go there? Let's start from move number forty-two here. Okay. And even this is fine. There are multiple ways to win here. White can play h7. Simply distract Black's king. Don't forget the king can't move to g7. So you go h7. You put your king to. You force Black's king to f7, and you march with your own king to the queen side and pick up the pawns. One plan. What Anna played was also absolutely fine. Second plan: you target the queen side pawns, pick them up one by one, and then slowly win the game with this pawn. That's the plan that Anna chose. I like it. Knight d4, king f7, king f5. Nice move there. Stopping king g6, making sure h6 remains alive. Everything going according to plan so far. Knight g6, knight c6, hitting that pawn on b4. Black gave a check on h4, attacks the knight, and after knight g6. In this position, White could have simply picked up the pawn on b4. The point is that your king is still not coming to g6. You pick up one pawn, you slowly improve the position to pick up the second pawn. Don't forget the way the game ended. Not having a pawn on b4 will give an extra move to either of the players to avoid stalemate. Mm -hmm. So this could count at some moment. But instead of taking on b4. Anna went for the beauty prize. Right. She went for the beauty prize, deciding to sacrifice her knight. A very thematic idea, but you have to be so precise in your calculation. She gave a check. Black attacks the knight, and here is when it all turned around. Eight seven. It looks black is busted. The king is getting deflected. 
too far away from the queen's side. Black has to take the knight on d8. White's king will advance, pick up the knight, pick up the pawn, queen the pawn, win the game. But instead, after king d8, with crazy precision, king f5, only move, knight has to fall back to h8. To stop h8, you pick up the f6 pawn. I'm going king g7, your knight won't have a square. You have to step away with your king to make the f7 square possible. Pawn goes to e5. Because you need e6 to take that f7 square away. King g7 would not have changed much after knight f7, Sagar. After king f8, e6, this is the brilliancy move. This is the beauty prize. Mm. But good news for Nana, it was also the only move in the position. So no, not, not hard to find. Not hard to find, but very pretty. Super pretty. And instead of Anna getting the beauty prize, it's Nana who's going for it with a move like knight f7, throwing the knight into the dragon's mouth. Pick it up. Give me that stalemate. Give me that draw. Give me that lead in the tournament. Knight f7, king g6. Knight goes back with a check. No improvement anymore. And this was game over with a stunning stalemate, king f7. Beautiful stalemate there. White having more pawns. Actually, it's equal pawns, but white having an extra pawn. And just, it's like, you know, you digging your own coffin and then taking all your wealth with you and just the life ends there. Yeah, and I just want to say one thing. Yes, very nicely put. I want to just go back to move 52. Go back to move 52. You know, this knight of seven beauty prize. Mm -hmm. Now chat, call back. Remember if we had picked up the b4 pawn. Imagine, visualize the position without black spawn on b4. What happens then, Sagar? Well, you, you can take and then he has to push and then you can queen and win. There's no stalemate. So these are like the little points that come to count. When you can pick up that pawn in the ending, go for it. Tanya, I was just explaining how materialistic white was and oh. died, <laughs> died with death. an extra pawn. And you said you should take one more pawn. Well, it's true. Maybe sometimes more of something is better. But yeah, in this case, either... She had to not sacrifice the knight or just had to win that pawn before sacrificing it. But uh, Anna Muzichuk's uh, sort of woes in this tournament continue. She's not able to find her rhythm here in spite of getting such a great position. And that this means, Tanya, we can... Oh, what a standing we have going into the final round. Yeah, this is the final round now. We have Anna Ushenina on 6 with Nana Zagnitze also on 6. Humpy is on 5 points. Harika is on 4.5. Maria Muzichuk 4.5. Vaishali 4.5. Olivia 3.5. Anna 3. Vantika 2. And Savita 1. And what is very important now, Tanya, is to look at the pairings because this will determine who will come on the top and let's also just sagar for a moment if we can just go back to the standings uh, page because it's so interesting that we've got two players on six points a clear point ahead of humpy so really the championship is between anna and nana currently mm. and anna ushanina is playing against Veshali, while oh. nana muzich nana muzich Nana Zagnitze is playing against Maria Muzichuk. Neither of the two leaders have an easy round. It is a tough fight. Vaishali, ambitious, really holding her own in this tournament. Up for a fight. Anna Ushanina also in top form. Playing with the white pieces. Sagar, Anna is going to make every chance count in this one. She's going to go all out. While Nana has a tough opponent. It is so difficult to say what will happen. But the one thing I can say is that Nana has gotten this far and a lot of it has had to do with being resourceful, but also getting lucky in those very difficult moments. It goes Absolutely. hand in hand. Absolutely. I think this is the thing that you need this champion's luck in order to win the tournaments. But is it going to be enough? That's the question. Because if Anna Ushanina wins uh, and Nana wins, They'll be both on the same points and Tanya, then we have to see who will be the champion of this tournament. So, while you can engage with the chat a bit, I will go outside and ask the arbiters as to what is the tiebreak scenario so that we can have the exact information. Oh, wow. Okay. Guys, you can ask questions to Tanya. And, what's uh, up chat okay we can discuss about what's going on here uh sagar will update us with 
What is the tie break like? Let's say Anna and Nana draw their game. They both end up with six and a half points. What happens next? Uh, do we have a tie break? Do we have a playoff? Secretly, as a comment, as a player, playoffs are always so tricky and the nerves are high. But as a commentator, as spectators, we love that action of blitz. We love that ad adrenaline of deciding a champion with even a shorter time format. If Humpy wins and Anna and Nana lose, can Humpy win? Good, po good point, actually. Let's say the top two, I'm going to try to bring up... Oh, we can't have the standings. I'm really uh, a bit scared about changing anything on the OBS. But according to the standings, Humpy currently is at five points. So actually, if Anna and Nana go down in the next game and Humpy wins, Humpy gets six points. All three are tied at six. And once again, it comes to what are the tiebreak rules. Sagar will come back and tell us. Where is Peter Leko? Peter is in Hungary right now. He is at home currently. And uh, I think, I, I mean, he has so many assignments with the World Championship match coming up. And, uh, well, the Champions Chess Tour has just gotten over. So I think uh, he's at home working hard for the different tournaments that he's working for. I do not know the address and I do not know where everyone is. Now you ask, okay, where is Fabi? Where is Hikaru? Hikaru is uh, at his hotel right now. He will be joining us soon. Where is Judith Polga? Judith Polga is also back in Hungary right now. But uh, yeah, chat, I'm not really sure where everyone is. Just travel 800 kilometers to watch the games. Totally worth it. Abhinav, welcome to the National Library. It's so nice to hear that you are here with us in the playing hall and uh, had the chance to experience the women tournament and will be seeing the final round. And of course, don't forget, the last day of the Rapid for the Open as well starts today. Sagar, do we have an update for what the tie breaks are? Because wait for it, it's not just between Anna and Nana, but Humpy potentially has an outside chance as our audience pointed out. Imagine Anna loses, Nana loses, Humpy wins. Right. So... The tie break is if two players tie on the same points, they'll play a playoff. What if three players tie on the same point? Then there is a tie break. They have their criteria. And the tie break, whoever is on top two will play the tie break. Okay, so if there is a tie between two or three, we only have one playoff between the players. And what is the playoff? Is it the blitz or how does Five it work? Five plus three, okay. two games. And uh, if it is 1-1, one, one, then Armageddon? a toss and Armageddon. Oh my god, Chad. Armageddon potential. Very big potential here because we do have a big fight. And we could have players tied. Uh, wow. Um, Sagar, how do you, what is your opinion about Armageddon? My opinion is that it can go either way. And the one who keeps their nerves is the one who's going to uh, sort of take it home. So I, I have a feeling that in this particular case, Ar reaching Armageddon could mean that it can go in anyone's hands like Nana or Anna both are pretty good I, I just feel it's just so exciting to watch there's no increment a lot of fun I also realized one thing Sagar was saying that you know what Tanya I'm just gonna go check out the tiebreak system because we need to know what happens then and then he comes back just munching on food no, I just ate one small thing from there. What is this? I, why is it that Tanya, I, have, I also, Why do you... I also got you some... You did not get anything. I got you some tea from, for you from here till here. Please drink it. <laughs> Coffee. I mean, there is just... It's so crazy. It's like, oh, I'll just... I, do you do this every time you disappear? Because you've been disappearing a lot since today morning. No, that was the internet issue. And I went to the player's zone because the arbiter was there. And then there was all this food in front of me. And look, you're just shunning away what I gave you. No, I'll have it in a bit. It's a bit. I'll have it in a bit. Or thoda Chat is karke. asking, are we going to have, are we going to have Hikaru in the commentary? Uh, maybe. I <laughs> that don't know. would be really cool. If we, I mean, if he has a good day today, Sagar. Yeah. Day one was bad. Day two, he really picked up his rhythm. Day three, if he finishes on a high, we'll try. Correct. Correct. Well, and also I think uh, there's blitz after that. So we never know. Um, players do want to remain focused. And on the rest day, we'll have Prague 
who is by the way prag is joining us today and then on the rest day tomorrow the players will just take it a bit lightly uh, you know lighter in general and then we'll have the blitz which will be nine rounds on day one and nine rounds on day two mm. and tanya i think we are ready to go the players are in their chairs and the round is about to begin which game should we start off with chat the final round of the tata steel chess india women is starting right now please do like the stream so that more players can join in and enjoy this thrilling match up that we've got coming on with so many possibilities of who will be the eventual winner of this first edition uh, sagar i think we have to keep our focus on the tournament leader and humpy's game okay so let's go to first nana zagnitze's game here she's playing against maria muzichu and uh, the game has started off with knight f3 by nana d5 c4 c6 slav on the board after d4 knight f6 on the board and slav defense is such a well known opening and she plays exchange slav now very smart decision by nana because slav exchange slav is very safe in that hmm. sense hmm. and she can keep small pressure because she has an extra move in the symmetrical position and at the same time she can keep an eye out on anna ushenina how is she doing and decide her strategy yes accordingly correct and then if anna is winning she'll start to push but if anna is losing she'll be like draw but do you think maria will be like draw accepted or will she be like na 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 are Ma maria will be like Ki draw or no draw it doesn't matter yeah with for my tournament so hmm. if the position is equal she will be like kyu na na karna hai hmm na na karte kyu time waste karna hai <laughs> let's take a draw by the way bishop f4 bishop f5 more symmetry generally if black goes e6 then the bishop is blocked hmm but if you play bishop f5 then you have the bishop out but now the downside of this is that there are some variations tanya where you can get bishop b5 queen b3 and that extra tempo does give wide a very small edge to keep trying and what you mentioned super important point once bishop comes to f5 don't forget the b7 pawn is defended it's not just that one small tempo but after queen b3 She we can directly it. makes I, this is the theory here sagar you want to go queen b3 immediately utilizing this move bishop f5 hitting that pawn on b7 black often replies this with knight a5 has knight a5 happen yeah so they continue queen with c4. the discussion the is, normal yeah. line this is a well known theory and let's go Ooh, to the game what of is happening anna ushenina versus vaishali it's a it's a grunfeld tanya the same line which you were discussing in the morning the bishop d2 variation she went c5 and D just C. a moment about c5 it is not the most popular response to bishop d2 you know you either want to play bishop g7 here which is uh, the main line and uh, c5 is not something that's often played but of course it's possible and white just gobbles the pawn very often white stays a pawn up but again black has to prove the compensation with time with the lead in development let's see if black was able to do that bishop g7 bishop G7. aiming at destroying the pawn structure by capturing on c3 queen c1 is against that you want to defend the c3 knight twice so that you can capture it with pieces instead of the pawn nice arrow game after queen c1 knight c6 continues with the development it's all about initiative taking out your pieces white still at home with a king bishop knight rook right e4 was played sagar knight jumps to d4 threatening knight d3 check mm -hmm. and that's a hole in white's camp but anna was like i don't care just go and do your stuff and she does it check queen d3 and now knight comes to e2 blocking this square on f1 so that white can castle and tanya amidst all of this thing that has happened white is saying i'm a pawn up Who's the materialistic girl now? I think it's definitely. <laughs> I mean, Anna Ushenina's opening strategy is really very interesting because if she's able to keep this extra pawn, then Vaishali will have trouble here. Where is the compensation? I'll tell you where the compensation is. And once again, if we have 
if we go through with the engines, these kind of openings are easy to say they don't work out, Sagar. But still, White hasn't cast it. Mm. And with my queen on d3, my activity, my first question to you would be, what do you reply to knight d4? I really want to keep up the momentum, keep up the tempo, try to make things more difficult for you. After knight d4, I'm threatening knight I'll d3, take. I'm threatening knight c2. You have to take. Yeah. So let's say you take. And now, can I take with the bishop still... Uh, making sure that you can't castle, I'm attacking c5. What it's... if I play queen b1 now to remove your queen out from there? I will go back queen a6. I'll go back queen a6. I'll still say, you know what? You want a castle? Nana. Nana. No, no. But yeah, Anna. Except I realize this is Vaishali and Anna. But now I go b4 and I want to stop you further. Maybe I'm just playing some crappy moves, but... It just feels so loose. I mean, you want to play all these moves, but what happens if I take advantage of things? And, Sagar, in this position of b4, I have spotted. Mm. Is it working? Well, maybe. And we should ask the chat. Chat, Guys, what would you play here play. with black? Remember, it's all about momentum. Slow moves like shot castle. Development is not what you want. You want to make life difficult for white. You want to make sure that things go wrong. How will you respond to B4? By the way, our chat also mentioned that when I went queen B1, there was a possibility of bishop takes f2, king f2 and take on d2. Oh, wow. I completely missed yeah, that. Very smart. Chat, chat, chat has learned a lot today that's a super so cool trick strong, very strong very nice trick there but but look at this they've also found this move tanya i can't believe they're so so strong and amazing job guys the move that has been mentioned by so many of you is queen f6 look at this queen f6 snehil patel raj anand apurup amazing i'm so so amazed it's I'm... not easy yeah tanya this move no, it's not because you've moved the queen around and now it's all about geometry. Chess is about geometry. Mm. Let's have some arrows from d3 to a6 to f6. And this is chess geometry. You're hitting on the c3 knight. You're hitting on the pawn on f2. And this is why development is important. White has played with fire and gets burnt with a move like queen f6 in these kind of positions. This just shows the kind of dangers that exist Correct. here. Correct. So yeah, very nicely uh, displayed here that things can go wrong for white as well uh in this position and meanwhile let's go to the next game this is our game between which one should we go to harikas let's no. take a look at humpy 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 because she is even though a point behind the leader sagar she still has a shot okay. at championship and she's playing against olivia who is an underdog in this tournament, is a target currently for Humpy. Humpy plays with the black pieces, so not going to be easy. But we can see from Humpy's opening choice and the position that we have that she wants to complicate this one. Right, absolutely. And we also have the heart rates of both the players. And you can see Humpy at a solid 92, 91, while Olivia is at 90. So both players are at a nine, heart rate of 90. And they did play the Rui Lopez here with Bishop B5, A6, Bishop A4, Knight F6, Castles. Tanya, it's the open Rui Lopez on the board. And it's also one of the lines that you play. I used to play this a lot before I shifted to not taking on E4. Hmm. And Archangels and early Bishop B7 setups. It's a very, uh, very dynamic opening. And uh, what happens with this is there's a... It's dynamic, but also a big strategic fight on the dark squares. So, white has to keep control of that. That's why very often white goes with the knight to d2, bishop to c2, knight to b3, tries and controls the c. Yeah. If you just come to the live board, because here... But it's... this move, Tanya, knight e5 is less common than d5 mm. here. That so, is actually, true. Olivia tries to take Humpy into a position which is not as well known. So take, take, c6, and now bishop e3, yes. Please uh, tell us this sort of blockade that can be played on dark squares. So I was mentioning moves like c3, bishop c2, you go knight d2, knight b3, and try to fight for the dark squares in the center. The c5 and the d4 squares are super important in these positions. And uh, which is why when white does play knight d2, black wants to usually trade off these knights mm. uh, to try to make sure that you don't get an easy hold. Now... It's never easy to try for a win with the black pieces. We'll have to wait and watch if Humpy is able to create chances. It's a very healthy opening for white as well. Uh, so we will come back to this. Let's go back to our Nana versus Maria board. We've had some developments there, Sagar. Take a look at this. Wow, what is going on here? Maybe we should just back up and take it. Yeah, so after this Queen A4 check, BD7, 
Quincy two as as you mentioned, this is well known theory. E six, E three, Rook C eight, Bishop D three, Bishop B four, and White Castle. So actually, Nana just keeping her calm, not doing anything special, just developing all her pieces. Knight H five, going after that Bishop. But you first play Bishop E five, force F six, and then come back. And I think there's an interesting variation here that you're looking at, Tanya. Yeah, I was just trying to understand where. Um, yeah, let's just move ahead of the position that you have. Okay. For example, okay. after f six, knight g three, bishop g three happened. The trades took place, and now knight c four was played. So I was wondering, wait a second, what about mm -hmm. the pawn on h seven? Why can't I pick that up? And then you can also check. Exactly, and it looks so nice for black for white. But this is so tricky. Knight b two doesn't work. I I don't think knight b two works because you give a check. Mm -hmm. On g six, and then you can pick up the knight. At least that's a possibility. Or even there is an option to go queen g six check. Yes, but also possible. Yeah, knight b two could be. But there is a better move for black. There's a stronger move here that it might appear that you know what white is surviving, but actually not. It's all about looking a little deeper in life mm. and finding the true meaning Correct. of life. And sometimes you can feel that the true meaning is something else. Like you want to trap this bishop, but g six is not possible. But then, when you see one door is shut, you look for a door that can be open to achieve the same result. अच्छा. So instead, if g six is not possible, Sagar f five is possible. थोड़ा दूर का दरवाजा. दूर का दरवाजा. You don't need to always close the door to your house. You can close the door to your building. Yeah. So then, give some freedom. But actually, you're taking away that eventual freedom. Exactly. Bishop you, you. You're not keeping the person in the house, but mm -hmm. you're keeping the person in the vicinity, Correct. in the colony, Correct. in the community. Right. Still cannot escape. Still right. cannot get out. And what what are we implying here? Nothing, right? No, we are. What? What we're implying here is that sure, the bishop is not getting trapped on h7. You have a little freedom. Come mm -hmm. to g6. Give me a check. But I'll just move my king. Go king f8 or king e7. Either works. You got a little freedom, but that's it. You're not getting out of here, and mm. eventually you will be trapped. Moves like rook h6, moves like queen f6. You will lose that bishop because I closed that community gate. Correct. And so, whenever you are trapped in life, when you have that little bit of freedom, like the bishop has on g6, be careful. It could be the eventual trap, right? Yeah. You. It's all about temptation. H7 is a temptation. Mm. You feel? Yes. Don't get tempted. That's the moral of the story, dosto. <laughs> Never get tempted in life. That felt like a very personal experience, yes. was it? Yes, it was a great moral, Tanya. <laughs> And now I'm What not. What taught you this moral in life of that temptation is bad? F five move. Okay. Yeah, today only I learned. Today only. Today learned. now, thanks to Tanya, because of Tanya, my life has <laughs> really evolved. I've changed, become an evolved person. I'm always wait. You know what I tell Amruta when I go back to the room? That you love that her. Tomorrow. I'm going to learn even <laughs> more things. There's a lot to learn from this. So, but that's your general outlook to life. That every day is a learning experience. It's not about whether it's me. I think every day that we spend, we can learn something. Yes, but, but somehow here, 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 here you kind of roll it into very ex uh, nice examples. Nice. It's fun. Happy to help, Sagar. Yes, maybe sometimes you can also tell these examples when we have Vishy in the chat uh, in our commentary. You know. <laughs> It would I was be like a little mouse at that time. I'm like, let me look at chess. What is happening? What about this? Move on. <laughs> Today, though, you were out of the scrape only. Almost you were on the edge. I was falling off my chair. I was, you know, every move because I didn't want to make a blunder in my analysis. I don't have an engine on here, so I didn't want to make like an obvious mistake. You're like, ha ha, yeah, yeah. So I, I, it was a very scary moment for me. No, you did well, Tanya. Amazing. Thank you. Rook F E one played, and after G six. That temptation is gone, but now Tanya, the king on f7 does look slightly suspect. G4, trying to create a weakness on dark squares because imagine if I can get g5, f5, bishop takes c4, and then knight sits on e5. Wouldn't that be amazing? You know what we call it? We call it a good knight versus mm -hmm. a bad bishop. Chess, a very important concept, is which pieces do you want to exchange? What do you want to trade off? And then you visualize what are you left with. Mm. And uh, then you make a decision. It's like let's say in life you've got hundred rupees. Hmm. You want to buy a television. No. 
for example, you want to, you can't. Buy that's fruits, a different thing. Buy fruits and that's my point. You want to, but Achha. you can't. It's a different thing. But let's say you want to buy a television, and you also want to buy food for the house. Hmm. So you think about it. If I buy a television, I will have minus fifty thousand rupees. No, we can buy uh, cheaper television. Okay, minus thirty thousand. But you okay. think about the trade off. I will give up all my money. What will I have left is an anda. Hmm. So what you decide? <laughs> then you can eat it because you. I need the metaphorical <laughs> anda, not the real anda. And then what you will be like, you know, instead I will exchange my money for food. I will get food in return. What is the end product? I'm left with money. I'm left with food. That's the trade off I want to do. I want to exchange my bishop, my good bishop. For this good night, you're left with a bad bishop. I'm left with a good night. Let's go. Right. And then you go to a fruit shop. Yes, I not a TV shop. I also want some food now. <laughs> Every five minutes, you've been going and getting food. <laughs> five minutes. I <laughs> haven't even eaten. Night D six Tanya, uh, G five creating weakness on E five. Sagar, that was very nicely pointed out, and you know G five is an important move and has to be timed well because now the knight has the potential to jump to E five, and even though our eval bar is giving an even position, I, I do like white. I like white. I like, I like white. I think uh, Anna Anana Zagnitze is doing it well here. She's keeping some chances alive as she wants to do so. Uh, depending on what is happening with Anna Ushenina, can we quickly check that against Vaishali? Because here. What we discussed oh, has is... happened. Wow! Hi, Tanya. Kya hi? Let's take a look, Sagar. Let's back up to that moment. So, knight d3, queen d3. Same, same. What we discussed, same ho gaya. Knight d4. But it shouldn't go exactly that way. You remember queen f6? What no, no, chat I, found? I, I, I wouldn't play. She won't go queen b1 because of this bishop f2 idea. Oh yeah. But then, how do you uh, keep your pawn on c5 alive? And also, you want to start preparing for castles. How how can you achieve all of that? It's so hard, and also let's not forget, Sagar, you can't move your knight a move like knight a4. Besides the fact that it's completely hideous, yeah. your e4 pawn is also hanging. Right. And bishop e3 is that a move that comes to mind? Bishop e3, but what about a take, take, take twice? Then my pawn structure is slightly ruined. But yeah, looks good. I can exchange a few pieces, right? I mean, you take, 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 and then you're happy in the end game. Oh, it. it's because I, I think everything else feels like a sad I, option. I was thinking D four, B four here, but it, as it, it looks too slow. Also, you're giving up this bishop c three e four. I see you're not mm. worried about it much, but you still lose the pawn. Right, and also Tanya, in such situations, a five can become very nasty with the rooks opening up. So I guess this is not a great position. Uh, so makes sense, bishop e three. And now a decision for Vaishali. Should she take on c3 and then take... She can't take on e4 if you take with the queen, right? H8 is hanging. Mm. So let's say take, take, take and take. This position, draw. Opposite color bishops, you've got a pawn. You know, your pawn structure is absolutely terrible. And this is when you go like... Draw, so, yeah? Yeah. I mean, that would be the most likely result. But then you go and see what Nana Zagnitze is doing. And then for Anna Ushanina also, <laughs> it's the same thing. Let's have a look quickly at what Anna, uh, sorry, Nana is doing against Maria after e4, king g7. Knight e5 will come in, Sagar. You're going to jump in with it. It is such a beautiful square. It's calling out to the knight. It's saying, just come to me. This is where you belong. This is your purpose in life. Correct. I agree. So right now, uh, Nana Zagnitze is thinking, uh, as Tanya just mentioned, we all think that white has potential in this position uh, and definitely some chances. 100%. I mean, look at the position. Your king castling has been a, hasn't been a success. Your rook is still not developed and white has sacrificed the pawn. So it's such a dynamic position. I think draw is the least likely result in this one. So I would still want to be white here. Nana playing for the initiative. Uh, so this one could go Nana's way, but of course it's a big fight and I don't think black is worse But black has a task of defending a difficult position. Correct. I agree. So uh, Let's go to the game of uh, Harika and Savita Shri. We should also check how that is happening because it's a very exciting matchup between uh, two of India's top women players and I think Harika has more space look at her bishops crisscrossing on the diagonals I like white here. Very nice position for Harika. Also, Harika's heart rate, Tanya, has been a steady at 70s yeah. and 80s. Very strong heart rate game. 
while Savita, 90s. I saw, I saw you were distracted there, Sagar. I could Wait, feel but it. this is I, for I, you. I, Vimal Avasti ji says, Tanya, I'm here to meet you. Possible? Met Sagar, Bharata Shri, in Mumbai. And he invited me to Kolkata. Okay, Vimal ji. <laughs> I told Vimal ji, please do come to Kolkata. There's a tournament happening. <laughs> So he's here. He, I think he lives in uh, Vizag. Oh, wow. And he's traveled all the way from Vizag. You so, know, we have another uh, audience uh, guest here who's come 800, traveled 800 kilometers to come to see today the tournament. We've got Vimal here. Right. So people from everywhere are coming in to see the final day. Absolutely. And guys, if you are in Kolkata, please do come for the final day of Rapid. It will be great fun. You'll get to meet all the you'll get to at least see all the top players maybe even meet them you'll also get to meet maybe vishy anand tanya is here there's this lot of things happening you should definitely come it's really a special event and of course uh, you've got the best players in the world here uh, you know you get a chance to see them live in action when the games are going, the tension on what happens, Agar? Vaishali and Anna Ushanina drew already. Oh, wow. And they drew at the position when we were like, draw? Why draw? Like, and Anna Ushanina says that worst case, what's going to happen? I'll Nana will win and I'll come second. Second is good for me. I mean, I think Anna would be happy with second place given the field and she's had a great tournament. But uh, with the, and more than that, Sagar, let's be objective about the position. Perhaps she just felt that... No, you can try, right? If you if you are real... I'm not saying this is winning I by any means. You. you can keep trying. But in this case, what she did is she took a draw. Now, Tanya, you tell me, as Nana's good friend, do you think that this takes off pressure from her or mm. gives her more pressure that now if I win, I'll become the champion? And you know what? It's such a good question what you're asking because Anna has drawn so Humpy can't catch up with Anna, mm. now, right? She's a confirmed minimum second. Nana's position is so crazy that anything can happen. Right. Nana's also playing Maria. If Maria gets her chance, she will not leave Nana. So I think, Sagar, what you said, it's true. Anna has played it very smart. Mm. Not trying to over push a position where anyways, it's not really clear this endgame if you yeah, can have a yeah. chance. But if if uh, if this happens, this means that uh, oh, and look at the position; it's heating up. So Anna it's getting Ushanina, hot in here. Tanya Anna Ushanina might just become the champion if uh, Nana Zagnitze me messes up this position. We have to see the position. Okay. We have to see what's she actually goes happening. She goes knight g five. Now, what's happening here? She wants to give a check. Perhaps is there some knight h seven ideas on cards? Are there some bishop g6 sacrifices happening? Rook can swing over here. Tanya, I like still white, but the engines like black is better. I would be scared with black. I completely get you. When you don't have an eval bar while you're playing to tell you that, you know what, uh, your position is absolutely fine. Don't worry about anything. Sub theek hai, sub changa si. When you don't have someone telling you that and giving you that confidence, you are shaky. And look at that. The last move that was played, immediately yeah. the advantage goes right. down and switches. Queen f6. But it's such a natural move. It's such a natural move. But I'm just wondering, why can't white pick up the pawn on d5? Yeah, now white can. And that would mean that after rook takes She wants d5, to go bishop c6. Maybe bishop c6 hitting the rook and the rook jumps back to e5. Which means that the pawns are now once again even. But white's d4 pawn is way healthier than black's double g pawns. So rook d5 played. Nana Zagnitze has taken. And guys remember this is the championship game. If Nana wins, she wins the tournament. If Nana draws, we are in for a tie break. If Nana loses, Anna Oceanina becomes the champion. And either case, it's going to be spectacular to watch because of the position that we have in front of us. And also, Na uh, Nana's mind, right? It's mm. going on that how much risk can I really afford? Because I need to keep that margin of draw alive as well so that at least I have a playoff. Yeah, that's true. You can't go all in and say at the end, Ki, Haan, yeah, you, I tried. And you know, if you know. Nana was a point behind... She would go all in. But she's only half a point behind. So all these psychological factors. And what's our clock switch? Yeah. What's happening to 94? 94, 94, rook d7. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
Isn't that a winning move or what? I really like 94 and 94 is forcing the hand, no? 94 rookie 4 you have to take, right? What rookie 4 is an exchange sacrifice. Happily, I'll go like, yes, give it to bishop me. Bishop e4. And then bishop c6, kya? Oh, bishop c6. That ah. works. Yeah, let's show that. But that's a very pretty so spot, So knight e4, Sagar. guys, very important move. You can't take with the knight because rook d7 intermezzo with a check and then taking on e4. So you must take with the rook. Bishop takes and now this very important move that Tanya spotted, bishop c6. Excellent move. Does it keep the it keeps the balance? Because now if you have to go rook d6, queen d6, I'm a happy camper. This should be equal. Yeah, more or less, right? Because it's equal pawns, black's king is exposed, white has a weakness on c3. So a bit of give and take, it's all fine. Yeah. So rook h8. Now uh, I think what is going to happen very likely, Tanya, is going, this game might also end in a draw, and we we'll have a tie break. Honestly, I am up for that. So we might have, if this does end in a draw, both end up with six and a half, and that means we go into a playoff of five minutes with a three-second increment, two blitz games. If that ends in a one-one, we'll have an Armageddon. But still, early days to call that result out. Yeah, absolutely. And now, uh, can we go to? Olivia versus Humpy, just to see if Humpy has a chance to finish in top three. She has to at least draw the game. Mm. Winning would confirm it. Right. So let's take a look at the position. What I is like happening? Humpy's chances here. She's gone queen d2. But look at this, guys. She has space in the center. Pawn on f4. It looks good. All her pieces are well positioned. The nice knight is blockading the passer. And the sub changasi. Hmm. All good. All good for Humpy. For now, we can leave it as small small edge. I would agree with you. I mean, just looking at the center and you feel that things are going according to plan. Of course, nothing direct is happening on white. But just the position visually is nice. More play for black. More plans of going at d4 at the right time. b4, a5, a4 at the right time. You can start. I think d4 is really what black wants at some moment. Right. By the way, Vishy Anand just messaged us a few minutes ago saying she escaped. That's Nana Zagnitze. She escaped in that position, which is also a big surprise to him. To Sagar, your move is on the board. Whoa! Which is 94. 94 on the board. But I don't think Maria is going to take more than a few seconds to just play rook takes e4. She needs to, is Rook e4 the only way to go in this position? Because I don't see an alternative. Yeah, what else? Your queen is hanging. If you move the queen, the knight is hanging. And Maybe. if you take the knight, the bishop is hanging. So Rook takes, bishop takes and bishop c6. Man, what hundreds. excitement. Guys, remember, it's not just about the prize money. The prize money is $10,000, which is substantial. But it's also about being the champion of the first ever Tata Steel Chess India Women's Tournament. A tournament that is historic for the chess world because for the first time ever, Sagar, it has the equal prize fund as the open event. Never happened before. Maybe in the history of any sport. I don't know, chat. Like in chess, I know this is a historical fact. But... Yeah, I, I think in many of the sports, they have a different price structure for both. Uh, so it's and possible. Po quite possible. Maybe our chat can tell us if they are aware of it. Rook takes e4, played Tanya, bishop e4, and now bishop c6. Uh, the thing is, if you find rook e4, you find bishop c6. Because you've just given up an exchange, you want it back, and bishop c6 will happen. But it's all about what is the evaluation of the arising position. Right. Uh, and on and the board side. It. Very it. alert, but very focused. This is a chance now, Tanya. Would you play rook e5? Because that's possible. Would you play rook d6? What else are the options here? Maybe you can also leave your rook where it is. Because bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5. So now a serious option for Nana Zagnitze who's down to 3 minutes here. Guys, if we zoom into our camera here and show you, the pressure is tangible. She's she gone for rook d6. d6. And I think that's a very practical decision. You trade off everything. It's a game you can't lose. And she probably knows that it means a tiebreak, a playoff. Right. And she's up for it. Right. And well, I do think... By a small margin, Nana would be a favourite in a playoff against Anna Oshanina. Right. Maybe. I, I'm not so sure about her blitz skills, but uh, you know her well. Very good, yes? 
yeah she's very strong and of course anna is very strong as well but uh, sagar given the position that she had this was the best decision possible mm. to not over risk it she's gone for the trade and after queen takes c6 let's say you try to put pressure rook on c3 c1. you can go rook c1 you can even dream one day of getting c4 in so black will have to find a way of stopping that and g4 is always a weakness i wonder if nana will bail out and agree for a quick draw on this or will she try to put pressure on g4 and the black's king i i think she should try because if she wins she will be the champion without having to play the tie breaks and in tie breaks things can go in any direction let's just quickly have the chess board here so that you guys can see the time that nana has is 3 minutes 4 seconds tanya and maria has 6 minutes 5 seconds so she has twice the amount of time i think somewhere deep within she would have seen that anna ushanina not deep within but she would have seen that anna <laughs> has drawn and deep within she's feeling let's just draw the game because you know tie break would be fresh start Yeah, or at least let's have a position where I don't have the chances of losing too, uh, mm. too many chances of messing this up. So I think uh, I completely agree with that, and it makes a lot of practical sense in my mind as well. Uh, Rook c one played, by the way. No, Bishop c six still on the board. Is this the live position? Yeah, Bishop c six, and Tanya maybe. Maria is thinking, can I take with the pawn? I know it looks crazy, but then you can think about c five break. Wow, takes with the pawn. It just, it feels like again you're just destroying your pawn structure. Yeah. You know your a seven pawn is a weakness. I mean, even if the eval bar agrees with that decision, it's a very difficult move to make practically. I would say, Sagar. Agreed, agreed. So logically, queen takes c six does look like the right move, and she takes it. She takes with the queen. on the board the c3 pawn is hanging and tanya now rook c1 any other moves that come to your mind maybe rook e1 no i like rook c1 because you want to threaten c4 rook e1 is also interesting but then you know you kind of are going into this queen into c6 this end game that no but no i won't go into end game perhaps rook queen c3 rook e7 okay king, king ah you want g8, to go queen, queen e2 queen e4 or something like that and i try but queen c1 queen h6 and then rook c1 meet <laughs> <laughs> oh but i can go king g3 but that's too risky but maybe possible i i'm expecting rook c1 here yeah me too but nana is down to 2 minutes 34 seconds nana you have to play you have to play quickly but okay 2 minutes is quite a lot of time what does our board say here let's go quickly and see that now after rook c1 as tanya mentioned d pawn is a passer i think she's made a move by the way Rook C one on the board, Tanya. Rook C one on the board, defending C three, keeping everything under control. And now, what White wants to play next? If it's White's move, I want to go Queen E two, B five. I like this saga. Wow. It's top C four, the move that we've been talking about, and this is what we were expecting. Queen D three. I was also considering Queen E two, attacking G four, and trying to get my Queen to E seven. Hmm. Could have been an interesting option, but uh, chooses another one. Queen to D three. You know what the idea is? B five. Yeah, I want to go D five. Push Rahu. Push Rahu. push and push with queen d4 check threaten to win the pawn on g4 oh she goes a6 push but then queen, queen c4. c4 and then i queen d4 takes takes and this rook is hanging so you yeah. can't do that if you take the queen then tanya rook takes c4 no i don't like that end game yeah so right now nana has a decision to make and imagine tanya if this position Occurs this way, like you go queen c4, you take rook takes on the board. Oh, she's gone she for d5, d5, but queen c4, she's definitely not mm. going to go for this end game. I'll be very surprised. I'm wondering what is it that White wants instead? Queen d2 maybe. Just queen d2. Yeah, queen d2. Idea d6. Push the pawn. Maybe the rook comes to d1. Then instead of defending c3 pawn, you'll be then defending your d7 pawn. Yeah, which is a pawn which that is a you, great pawn. it's a super duper pawn. It's a wonderful you, pawn. It's a wonderful pawn. You want to go rook e1, rook e7 as oh well. I like God. that saga. I like queen c4, queen d2 a lot. You don't care about the a3 pawn even if it falls with an attack. You want to get your pawn on d7. You want to get your rook on e7. You want to this is actually still pretty hot. This is very this is looking scary for Maria Muzichuk here if she doesn't play carefully. I have a feeling that still it's Nana who's pushing here. The engine saying equal queen c4 queen now. C4. Come, come back, Nana. 
there is no way that Nana will go for a trade here. She will fall back. She wants to keep that D5 pawn alive. So Queen D2 seems like, well, the obvious choice here, the more human move here. And I really like this spot. Also, Queen D2 always eyes Queen G5. Queen D2 played, Tanya. Nana making yeah, something hai. out of nothing here. And she's so cool and calm, guys. We don't have the heart rate on them because they, they have not worn the, those bands. But you can just feel it that she's very, very calm from the outside. But we also know her a bit because of her interviews. Whenever she comes inside, she's like, Phew, I was quite stressed out. So yeah, she must be tensed here. Wow, and if Nana manages to you know, draw water out of stone in this one. She actually wins it. Tanya, rook, rook C5. C5. And her idea is if you go D6, she wants Rook D5. There. And but then your she idea, Sagar, start with Rook D1. But it's Rook there. D1, Queen C3. Do you want... No, I want to go Queen G5. I want you, to checkmate you. You don't exchange queen the Queen F4 or queen, queen G5? I'm not queen sure. Queen F4, Queen G5. And now threat is Queen E7, Pawn push. Queen G4, everything is hanging. I would be very afraid with black. What is the clock situation the here? The clock situation currently is Nana having 1 minute 25 seconds and Maria having 3 minutes 44. Guys, if within Kolkata, in the National Library, at Bhasha Bhavan, we have a Georgian and a Ukrainian fighting against each other for the top spot here she plays what d6, d6. No, no rook d5 what's the plan what did she she wants to give a check on e7 nana wants rook d5 queen e3 rook d6 queen e7 queen d6 win the rook win the game oh my goodness that is well spotted tanya which means that the rook on d6 would be hanging but so, she's not going to go for that. She's going to go rook d5, queen e3. She won't take on d6. But then you have made progress, right? You can go queen e... Oh, you can go queen c6 and exactly. then the d6 pawn will be rounded up. I mean, Nana always has a repetition there, right? Queen e7 check and somewhere you'll go queen h4 or oh, you go queen f8. Tie breaks. Tie breaks incoming perhaps after d6 and she goes rook d5. Rook Guys, d5 on the board. Queen e3 will be played here queen on e3 the board. also on the board. Rook d6 is a massive blunder. Queen Ooh. e7 will win the rook. Do not That's queen... not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But also... She has made a move, Sagar. Queen d3 played. Queen d3. And no now time, time for a check here. Time for not one check. Time for PPs. You have to give a yeah, perpetual a lot here. Of checks, yeah. Queen e7, queen h4, check, queen check, e7. Check 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 check, 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 check. And a draw. And then, Tanya, you can have a sip of your tea for the tie breaks. Before the tie breaks. I'm going to need more than tea for the tie breaks. I mean, have you seen? This means Nana will play against Anna Shin. Also, I don't believe that they can escape the perpetual. Yeah. Because you can't defend the D6 pawn No, you pawn can't anymore. give up your D6 pawn. Is there an option to go rookie 1? Or am I crazy? Rookie 1? I mean, I am. Rook D6? Rook e3. Oh, rook h3 is not possible Yeah, anymore. there's no square on h3. So, I think it's better okay, wait, to just Sagar. give checks. No, no, no. Rook d6, queen h4. Ah, ch you mean rook e1, rook d6, queen h4, king. Oh. Rook e... Oh, no, we are, oh. we are seeing a repetition. We are seeing a repetition as it is happening yeah. right now. We are in for a playoff chat. But you know what? Wait for it. Maybe. Wait, Karo. But Tanya. Maybe. Tanya, the idea was that that was not bad. Queen e7. No, no, she's repeating. One. She's but, repeating. But, but what was happening here? If I'm you take sure. on d6, that's already <gasps> lost after queen h4. So maybe she could try. Oh, she goes queen e7. She's she's drawing this. Ah, she's not going. What? Rook h5 played. Yeah, because I think rook e1 was lost. Did she have a chance to go rook e1 here? Did she go king g7? No, she went. She didn't go king g7. Because rook e1 is lost with the same oh. idea, Sagar. You're getting checkmated. My rook is coming on e7. My queen is coming on h7. So this queen... could not be played. So she had to go rook h5. Only wow, move well and spotted. she finds it. But now, Tanya, this is a draw. Rook d5, queen h4. That way we can draw, right? Rook d5 on the board. Yeah, and I think this is the but right one. Can we note the move order? Let's go rook e1. So that if you take on d6, there is queen h4, rook e7. Yeah, but I'm just wondering that after rook e1, I have a move, right? Maybe I can play something else. Queen f5, is that an option? But then d6 is alive. Yeah, yeah. And this all boils down to whether Nana wants to make this final choice here to keep going or she would like to agree to a draw because draw is in her grasp now. 
Queen H4, Queen E7. She's a bit confused there. Tanya, she's down to 12 seconds. 10. She's thinking she, she repeats it. She repeats it, Sagar. But what if Maria now gets... No, she goes Rook H5. Of course, Maria sees that King G7, Rook E1 is lost. So, Rook H5. Again, down to 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Nine 8, 8, 7. She goes for it. The final seven. repetition. Queen E7, Rook D5. Oh, has she played Queen oh, F6? Queen F6. What? Oh, Nana, oh, Nana the fighter has played what Queen F6, fighter. but now Rook F5, Queen H4. So. Ah, it's already three that times. That is it. Handshakes, what a fight. What a game this was. And Sagar, just amazing. And they're analyzing. We can see it. Let's just have a close-up on the players if we can, producer G. There we have it. They're having a look, trying to understand if there were chances. Uh, I'm sure Nana's thinking if she could have continued with rookie one, but she was down to seconds on the clock and so much at stake, so much at stake, needing only a draw to go into a playoff. Uh, you don't want to take extra risk. And of course, it's not over. Yeah. The championship continues. Absolutely. It's going to be Nana Zagnitze versus Anna Ushenina oh. Tanya. Kya lag hai? What are your feelings like? We will discuss those feelings, Sagar, okay. because we've got matches coming up. We still have some live o action Olivia on. Kiolbasa versus Humpy. And look at how Olivia is coming back in this tournament. She is playing like a beast. She has already beaten a few players and now she's even better against Humpy. Better is just a very mild way to put it. She I mean, must this be is crushing busted. through. You, you've got two extra pawns. One of them is on e7. The other one is on b4, hitting your knight on c5, saying, Yaha se ja. You've got no activity on the board. b4 will also go to b5. Queen on d6, always target towards a disco. And it just looks really bad for Humpy. Yeah, very bad. And there's one more game going on, which is Anna Muzichuk versus Vantika Agrawal. And here, Vantika wow. on her way to creating an upset, beating Anna Muzichuk because she's a piece up. She's just a clear piece up. She's At first, I was like, wait, what? How? And then I realized that why just has an extra piece for nothing? Tanya, that's uh, quite a great she's way for... Rook H8 mate. She's threatening Rook H8 mate in yes, this position. Yes, and, and uh, while the others are going to play Blitz... Vantika is going to have this as her last game of the event here. And Sagar, before we go into playoffs, let us put up a poll for chat. Who are they rooting for? What they think will be the result? We can, you know, Anna or Nana or Armageddon. Yeah. And see what our chat thinks about it. They've been in this no, journey with us. if you put Armageddon, they will, oh, always, they will <laughs> always say Armageddon. No? Let's just put the two names and it yeah. can also include Armageddon. Who do you think... Will, will win be the Tata Steel Rapid Chess Champion India Steel's Champion 2022. <laughs> Date we <laughs> in Kolkata at the National Library. Bhata Bhavan. <laughs> Let's go, guys. There's a poll there waiting for you to answer while I'm very excited. Uh, here to see this game that's going on after knight takes c8, bishop c7. Vantika Agrawal might just go back home with something to cheer about from this tournament. And she wins. Anna wow. Muzichuk has resigned. Wow. What a finish for Vantika. But one has to feel for Anna. I mean, she's had such a tough tournament, Sagar. She's just not found her rhythm. As Anand says, you know, these events do happen where you're just not in form. Yeah. And that's what happened to Anna Muzichuk. And I'll be quite interested to know what she does now, today and tomorrow to get into the groove for the Blitz event for now. She has lost her final round against. Yeah, Anand se puche, he'll join us for the tie breaks. But I think he's uh, he's, he's gone back. Mm. He'll come in the evening, I believe. And Humpy versus Olivia Kiolbasa. This is a round of upsets. Just what a turnaround! And I mean, Nana started as and remember, just one round with two rounds to go. She had a one point lead, sir. One point lead. And now we are in for a tie break. We're in for a playoff and we will 
have the two players back on the stage for us I, what do you think they're doing right now in the wrestling area i don't know if our director saab can get a camera there on anna ushanina and uh, nana zagnidze inside or maybe have a clip of them shot which we can show later to our viewers that would be amazing uh, anna ushanina actually uh, tanya I, i would love to read a bit more about her you know she was the women's world chess champion from 2012 to 2013 i did know that she has been a former world champion and uh, i mean she is she was very close to 2500 at some point a uh, very strong player has she's always a played GM. she's a gm so which means that in a live rating at least she's crossed maybe she did cross yeah. actually her peak, peak rating, rating was 2502 so just around 2500 Also, you know, Georgia versus Ukraine has been a big fight at the Olympiads as well. So it's going to be nice to see how this Georgia-Ukraine clash happens in Kolkata, like you were mentioning. Yeah. Uh, for the championship of this event, which to both of them, Sagar, it's two blitz game, five thousand dollars at stake. Oh, nice! It's like ten minutes. Me play ten minutes, half an hour, and take home five thousand. That's a good. It's a good payday. It's I mean, good. for literally ten minutes, so much money at stake. Not just money, pride of being the champion, the bragging rights of being the champion, and it all comes down to these two blitz games and a yeah. potential Armageddon. And and you can always say that you came to India and won a tournament. That's quite something. So we'll see what what they are up to. Meanwhile, Humpy, uh, Humpy's heart rate has gone down quite a bit, but her position is just lost now. Knight H five. With the idea of knight f6, and if you take on e7, then I trade and I go into a knight end mm. game. Two pawns up, two Tanya. Two pawns up. Yeah, this is a bit. I think Humpy over ambitious with black, and it was the need of the hour for her. Yeah, she had to do that to get her chances. And very often with black, that kind of play can backfire. It can also go your way. But it's a double-edged sword. Always tricky, and it didn't work to plan for her. Correct. Correct. By the way, our chat's getting very creative. They are saying twenty-one minutes. Me, paisa double, करने का scheme. Like, like oh, nice, and nice. One more, oh, uh, we have a result. By the way, Humpy's resigned. Humpy has resigned. So a tough end to Humpy's run. She had a good tournament, Sagar. But mm. you know, the last round loss always hurts. Yeah. And uh, Olivia, well, kudos to her to overcome this challenge. And yes. ट्वेंटी वन मिनट्स में पैसा डबल होने वाला है ट्वेंटी वन मिनट्स में पैसा डबल विशाल समवन सेज राज आनंद सेज ओ ओ जाने जाना इट्स एना वर्सेज नाना आई लाइक दैट नाइस that sounds a lot like you what i mean this is what you have been producing in the last couple of days you have days. to do the oh oh jaane jaana oh, oh jaane jaana oh, oh, it's like it's this nana versus ana Or Anna versus Nana. Jana, Nana, kya jada? Ah, correct. It's, but you have to do the oh oh, Jana, Jana. It's Anna versus Nana. Okay. Oh oh, Jana, Jana. It's Nana versus Anna. Anna versus Nana. Anna right? versus Nana. <laughs> Kolkata oh, oh. me Anna. Ghar pe kya hai manana? Kolkata me Anna. सौंदेश खा के जाना सन सौंदेश ने चेस देख के जाने को बोला सौंदेश खा के चले जाएंगे पीपल विल कम टू कोलकाता ईट सौंदेश नेवर कम एंड सी द मैच सॉरी भाई वो भूख लग रही थी ना अब आपकी तरह मेरे पास वो ब्रेक्स नहीं थी जब जाके मैं खाना खा रही थी अच्छा मैं गेस्ट को ला रही हूं जल्दी से खाना खा लो वो हो नहीं रहा था ना तने शुड आई गो एंड चेक इफ बी सी आर मे बी आई विल जस्ट गो एंड चेक इफ ही इज देयर अराउंड विल गो एंड चेक विल जस्ट चेक सो या प्लीज सर इफ यू ड्रिंक वन सिप आई विल फील बेटर बिकॉज़ देन इट विल अरे ये देख वाला बुरा लग थोड़ा बी कंसीडरेट अबाउट बी ड्रिंक इट I'll have it in some time. No, no, I'm feeling bad now. now. That's what I was telling you since a long time. It's getting cold. It's cold. I'll have it in some time. It's you know this is a hot matchup happening. Tana. I maybe cannot can have cold your, anything. Maybe you no. can take your cup it's outside. Been, okay. into the reality the is that it's been lying here for six hours. <laughs> so there's just no way that I'm gonna have it. Let's do that. Take it outside into the playing hall, and it'll get heated because the environment is hot. It's like it's heating up. The Both the tension players. is on Sagar. I cannot believe two blitz games will decide the fate of the players here. The champion of the event, the extra five thousand dollars, 
big paycheck nana a big moment for her and actually now huge moment for her yeah. this is going to be a lot of fun maza aa raha hai maza aa raha hai because maza aa raha hai oh oh jaane jaana nahi abhi ruko ana ruko ruko people should see you no otherwise okay. what's the point no. oh, okay oh oh jaane jaana it's ana versus nana calcutta me i chess dekh ke jaana bandish so by the way tanya look at how the arbiters are preparing for this match up you know everyone's there we can see them setting up one board now all of a sudden everything is on one board also remember at 4 o'clock the open section will start coming in so they don't have much time imagine that carrier maro mujhe maro <laughs> pratichi is saying perfect moment to join ic i think she just missed our dance so now it's the perfect moment no more dance <laughs> Well done, Pratichi. She, she well yesterday done. made a tweet saying that she was in some train journey, and there there was this phone. She was watching the broadcast. Ooh, nice! And it was very nice. But mm. imagine that she's watching this in the train, and we are doing this step. Huh. That could be a little disturbing for. I think it would be Pratichi. Answer. I mean, it is a moment to celebrate. It is yeah. a moment to sing and dance because we have a tie break coming up. We are celebrating chess here. Uh, Ashwin, do we know in how much time they're gonna start? Five, five minutes. minutes and to what about go. who? Wait, 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 Sagar. Who gets white? Who gets black? Uh, it's like one one each, right? Yeah, so, but who starts with what? It matters a lot in blitz. Right. I think we. Oh, that's a very good question, Tanya. Why don't you Dude, go? Dude, oh, oh, I, I got tackled this. Tanya, I have to go and check. <laughs> Why don't who I go is... and check what's happening outside? Because hey, Bhagwan. And now you can see there we have Sarwanan also in this uh, crowd. he is one of the well known international masters of india and a wonderful chess commentator and also a book lover but they are setting up the chess board here and what is happening oh they are going to do a toss i think who yeah. who, is, who is this who's coming is that lenny no lenny would yeah, no it's Le- not lenart it's who is that maybe it's lenny it's lenny i think mm. no they did oh, a toss what and Can you But find out? Can, we, can we put the heart rate on those two players? But now with with the tie break, with everything at stake, only two games to go. That would be epic. We can ask the uh, the uh, Yaro or someone if maybe and could be something very nice for our viewers. No. I mean, it's going to be amazing. But you know, I also with their heart beating. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, Tanya, what's your heart rate? It's actually seventy-eight. Yeah, है तानिया. तो अभी तो chill zone चल रहा है ना. अभी तो हम ऐसे wait कर रहे हैं. And also, I think it will be really amazing if the players can wear it. But it it depends on how comfortable they are. Sagar, because it's such an important match for them right correct, now. Correct. Correct. So you know, with that in mind, with just it coming down to these two blitz game, it's a priority for them to make sure that they're as at ease as possible. Correct. Absolutely. and by the way uh, tanya you can just check what's happening in the chat you while i create oh, okay. a very nice scene uh, for our viewers because you know uh, it's always that they can miss something by the way talking about missing something chat is informing us that with the last round result harika is the one who's leapfrogged in the standings oh we have to check the standings and finishes third yeah okay i'm going to try and quickly see if we have an update on the standings Ch- thanks has chat for you there made the standings guys yes he has are wa 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 ek minute ek minute tanya just wait a second huh? okay we will get the standings up soon but you're on point with that that harika has indeed finished third I think she has so much reason to be happy about that result. It's her first tournament being a mother. She's coming back to the board after a couple of months, I think 3 months, and it's a different feeling for her. So to finish third in this field with this event in this rapid format, definitely reasons for Harika to celebrate. Hmm. Correct. Oh, Amruta, Sagar Amruta, Amruta, Amruta. Are Oh my god and we see Anna Ushanina has taken her oh. place she starts with the black pieces Nana will start with the white pieces and uh, our audience is ready Anna looks confident adjusting her sleeve that she's i think Sagar she's wearing she might be wearing the watch by the heart rate monitor by the way Oh she has no issues right so she has always worn it 
So she, we will get Anna's heart rate, which is but, amazing. But did you see how she put it? It's not very firm. So maybe we we have to check if that would be accurate or not. But we will see. That's always the question, guys. There are a lot of things that have to be done properly. Uh, and Tanya, how is this view for our viewers? Wow. And Sagar, can we add the chessboard also somewhere? Because then no, no, we have that is already there. No, no, on this view only. Oh, you want us to be there on the chessboard also? Yeah, we can be like a small entity on the side. We have the players. Then we'll do this mode. Move the chessboard away from the... Yes. Okay. Lovely. So we can see the live board as is. Okay, yeah. We can see the players. And you also want us to be in here. I mean, if there's place, otherwise... It, there's always place for us. Are Lovely. Let's have us. Chat, what do you think about this? Let chat decide once we have this one. So we get the live board on the top right chat. We get a focus on the players. Yeah. Okay. Right. So Nana isn't, we don't have the heart rate monitor on Nana, but we do have it on Anna. So chat, tell us how is this? We will have, of course, uh, even Nana on the screen. And there we have it. The two players getting ready. The game has begun, Tanya. Yes, I think chat likes it. Because, okay. and of course, if we have to analyze some critical moment, we'll quickly shift to the analysis board. Dear, dear. We'll, we'll do that. Uh, for now, let's first start off till I get some time. Tanya, you can take us through the opening because it has begun. It has begun and we will have the board update and it is a queen's gambit declined. Nana with the white pieces goes for the queen. Is it going to be a Ragozin? No, it is a pure QGD setup. A queen's gambit declined opening. Nana has an option to go develop the bishop on f4, to develop the bishop on g5. It's all about what her approach is going to be and she slows down a little bit. She slows down. She's thinking about it, how she wants to take this opening on. Hmm. Tanya. Uh, uh, no minute, I'll ah, you uh, take your time. I'm just waiting for, I'll be with chat and uh, take them through the moves. Uh, so no, now it's set. And we do. Are lovely, lovely. So Bishop G5 on the board, Sagar. And H6, Bishop H4 happened. Hai kya? Chat, how is this looking? Uh, does this work? It almost looks like we're part of the audience. We're just seated over there with the audience on the chairs. And uh, can we have a bar also? <laughs> 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 but Tanya, look at Anna Ushenina's heart rate. It is 143. Oh my God. So she's very calm right now. It's high, it's high. But... And what has the what is the opening like? So Tanya, it, as you mentioned, it's a queen's gambit declined. Bishop h4, dc4. She played this one of the games. She played it, and White attacks the c4 pawn with e3 to complete development. Pick up the pawn. C5 strikes in the center immediately. Take on d1. Trades happy with the trade because you capture the d file saga. You you'll have a better development of pieces. It's a very safe approach, mm. but a long term game. Do not think that Anna, Nana is going for a draw here. Only queens have been traded off, but she will have more space and easier play with the pieces. And knight d7, now Nana's thinking, I'm a little surprised. You know what she's thinking, whether she should go c6 or not. Hmm. She has to give the c5 pawn. If she goes c6, she also destroys black pawn structure. Ah, you want to do that, but maybe Tanya, I then go knight b6 and I don't take this pawn and I protect my c4 pawn. That could be an option, no? C6, knight B6 C6, does look six, like something to be scared six. of. Yeah. And then knight E5, it kind of just continues Sagar. And this is the reason Nana is taking her time. Mm. And Nana just, I am very impressed with her. You know, I've learned a lot of about keeping your cool, keeping the pressure. Just, I thought you've learned a lot from me. That you, I have learned a lot off the board. I'm learning mm. a lot from her on the board. But yeah. You know, so many teachers here, guys, especially... Uh, absolute pleasure to learn a lot of dance moves from Tanya. All right, Bishop C4 on the board, Sagar. It will be all about who will dance at the end between these two because this is the deciding moment right now. Mm. Nana decides not to play C6. Black will recapture on C5. I'm expecting Knight C5. You want your Knight over there. Uh, you will want to go short castle. After Knight C5, Bishop B5 check might happen. 
it's for a blitz it's definitely a slow grind yeah absolutely it's uh, it's something that both players are happy to play with and you know this game has slightly less pressure than the sec than the second game would have because even if you lose you get one more chance to come back it's the best of two guys mm. knight takes c5 on the board and knight e5 nana going immediately in with her pieces she's now threatening bishop b5 if black goes shot castle Haan, you have to sense. you have to, and it makes a lot of sense to do that right um and Maybe i'm b4. expecting kick, shot castle kick, kick him away with b4 i would love to go b4 but the problem with that is that the b4 pawn can potentially become very weak after knight a6 you'll have to waste more time with a move like a3 and then you have to calculate all these knight, knight b4, b4 ab4 bishop b4 with your king in the center sagar no, no, this no, no, can no. turn very dangerous right right so by the way she goes g5 tanya bishop g3 and now a6 on the board and anna ushenina's heart rate guys this is not incorrect this is the correct heart rate right now she's at 151 unbelievable and tanya is right now at a solid 78 so she is half of the number of times my heart yeah. is beating half the time well anna is playing over there you yes. know so it's understandable but definitely i can imagine her her feeling the pressure <laughs> and the tension before kya hi matlab even though it seems like her heart rate is high we, we would have loved to get those heart rate of nana as well but we don't have it wow and sagar has she played bishop e2 she has what a move guys this is positional strategically so strong nana decides that her bishop belongs on f3 such a difficult oh, move to what make what a beautiful idea beautiful rerouting of the bishop Pura... from c4 you come back to e2 you go to f3 you make sure you attack b7 black's bishop on c8 is stuck over there mm. and this is a classy move sagar fantastic and tanya now you can she goes knight e4 she wants to exchange a few pieces let's say you take with the knight knight takes and then maybe you want to play bishop f3 but there's bishop b4 check that you have to be careful about mm so you might have to start with shot castle you can't rush with everything knight e4 the trades have happened and she has decided oh she goes bishop f3 okay and bishop b4 i'm expecting bishop b4 but now. then king e2 is a square and mm. maybe tanya the best idea is to take on g3 at g3 and then continue that position with bishop pair for black But as you just mentioned, the bishop on c8 is bad, and there's pressure on a8 and b7. Meanwhile, Anna Ushenina has just surpassed 160 on the heart rate. Wow! On... If this is accurate, no, Anna... no, this is if this is accurate. This is... Anna needs to calm down. No, she is at she's calm, but she, she takes back a g. Sagar, the heart rate monitor is telling a whole different story right now. An HG on the board. Wow, one fifty nine, touching a hundred and sixty in this blitz game. There is pressure on Black Rook. Be it important. You want to kind of defend that pawn, but where is the bishop going? I'll tell you. It's a very difficult. Wow, what about bishop H five and attacking this? How do you defend it? I'll have to go shot castle, no, to try. But then I take on F seven, oh take on H six. Like I take here, take here, take here, and take this guy. Would that work? It is an important, oh, interesting decision, but it's such a pleasant position for White. Mm -hmm. You can't go b5. I've got knight c6 jumping in. I've got bishop c6 jumping in. Right. With no, you can't go bishop d7. My rook on d1, knight on e5. Depend it. Why rush with these decisions? What about f6? Then you have knight g6. Knight g6 or bishop h5 check. It's getting difficult to go with bishop, bishop f6. f6. And I come back now. I'm targeting the d6 square. Positional chess 101 lesson here, but b d7. Anna says bishop ko bahar nikalne mil gaya. Now I can get my bishop out. And there Anna Ushenina maybe got excited. She's now at 160 again. She's almost crossing 160 on a heart rate. I can't believe when there will be like few seconds left. She might go to 170 or 180 as well. Sagar, that would be very, very uh, no, scary fine. to watch. I, I, fine. Yeah, but that will show us that just how stressed and tense she is on yeah. the inside. So, by the way, Tanya, can we not win a pawn knight d6 and knight b7? Is that not possible? Or then you go and Bishop chop off b2 two is b2 hanging. pawn. Yeah. Okay. So let's go knight. And as Nana starts to think a bit more in this position, Anna's heart rate starts falling because you know. 
she's getting a bit relaxed here that her position is okay by the way one more thing tanya knight d6 king is a knight f7 but there as well b2 was hanging bishop b5 check also be oh, careful sagar you can't rush with these things shouldn't be so careless there b3 played b3 but played now bishop but bishop b5 and the reason Finn why it. anna's heart rate is falling is also because simply she's mm. managed to take out her pieces Correct. that pressure that she was feeling with being calm uh, has gone with not being able to develop has gone away now and she's feeling a lot calmer about her position I think Tanya, this is going to end in equality now. The players have exchanged their bishops. It's the opposite coloured bishop position. I doubt whether we are going to get some action here. You know, chat is saying they want to see heart rate reaching two hundred. <laughs> My friend, so toxic. <laughs> <laughs> guys you want to see it reaching 200 then please do come and join us for the next game because it can happen it can happen anything can happen Sagar, it's dangerous to reach 200 it's dangerous only but it <laughs> only can, it's only dangerous it's Tanya. not it's not like uh there's no, no fatal My or anything it's, just, it's all fine guys rook c8 <laughs> Rook c8 played opposite color bishop targeting c4 b7 will get traded off for c4 saga this one is going to end in a draw right. one step closer to an armageddon next game will become the decisive blitz game so you know pressure mounting so while uh... but you see now with opposite colored bishop position anna's heart rate is at 140 tanya and it's not increasing much mm. because she knows that now there's nothing much this is actually interesting these all little uh, tidbits of information that we get in fact it's so stable at 140 now she knows that she has Draw it under heart control heart. so she's definitely feeling it on the inside as well and it was almost but touching 160. tanya what if now she starts to get better after rook c4 rook d7 king f8 you take on b7 i take you take i take on a4 she's a pawn up and then her heart rate starts to grow again because she's winning we, we're seeing Not it happen by better. the way it's happening Check. right now. Look, look, look. It's, it's happening it's right growing, now. It's growing, it's growing. 150. Because she's 152. Better. You see? 153. It's crazy <laughs> what's going on. And the re 155. The reason for that is it was the same when she was worse. And now that she's better, it is. Oh, now maybe I'm winning. Sagar, it's a question of $5,000. Extra $5,000. Yes. It's 10000 for the first prize. Five. This split the prize money. Oh, they split oh. the prize money equally. So, okay, it's all about the trophy, Tanya. It's all about it's the about, trophy. It's a and trophy. Like, although it would have been amazing if it was about 5,000. But... <laughs> Tanya is like, Are, paisa nahi hai, kya hai? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also fair. They both have worked hard in this tournament equally. And I think splitting the prize is a very fair way mm. to deal with things. But Tanya, what is not fair, what is happening right now is that this opposite color bishop, which we thought is a draw, is now becoming completely better for black. And that's because black spawn will reach all the way to A3. What are you guys doing? Are you going to stop? Why are you going to stop? Why are you going to stop? Why are you going to stop? Oh, and Bishop E7, what a classy move. Nana Zagnitze under big pressure. Rook A7, King F6 now. Defend it from above. Wow! And Tanya, maybe we can quickly have our viewers to check this view so that they can see what kind of tension is there. Unbelievable! Only 11 seconds! Kingi one played Nana in big, big trouble in this one, Sagar. But we've seen Nana survive some very difficult Oh man, if she survives this... It's just literally, I feel like she's used up like a thousand lives in this tournament yeah, already. Yeah, And now Amruta with the... Uh, sorry, Tanya with the bishop on E7. She can move the rook away. Rook b2 and now a2. a2. Oh. And once the pawn gets to a2, all that you have to do is get the bishop to e5. Or go bishop b4 check, bishop c3. Sagar, this looks just like game over. What do you do after bishop b4, check, bishop c3? Check. Now that he's landed, oh. hand, it's bishop b4, bishop c3. Nothing oh stopping a1. God. Game over. Unbelievable! What a turnaround this was. That was. It was like we thought it's going to the second game. It's the first game. It's a short shot draw, and then it happens. Na Anna wins. Anna wins. Nana has to 
win, win the next on game demand. on demand she with has, black pieces with the black pieces nana has to win on demand to force a playoff or anna ushinina will win the tournament are baap re it's a huge game and i don't think there'll be a long break guys right now anna ushinina's heart rate at a solid 150 in spite of winning this maybe just she removed her band now it's at a concert <laughs> but <laughs> but wow tanya that was a thriller totally it's like anna ushinina is one in a scene banana <laughs> we cannot have such things happening Why without your not even on no we are exactly. not I, that's why it happened this so this is a big match coming up sagar there's no, nana nice. <laughs> nana ushanina can like this song and she would like to be played when she's getting the trophy maybe what is chess 24 is watching <laughs> So then, what would happen? She'll be like, be like, yeah, Peter, like, okay, sir, how is she going to do? She'll be, they'll be like, why doesn't she be so creative when she's commentating for us? <laughs> oh my God, but Sagar, this is just turning out to be a thriller. Hmm. And now, what's the theme song for Nana? तुम भी कुछ सोचो. वो तो उनके लिए तो बहुत सॉन्ग आया है ऑलरेडी हां काफी ज्यादा मेनी सॉन्ग्स सो चैट व्हाट वुड बी द थीम सॉन्ग फॉर नाना बाय द वे डायरेक्टर साहब इफ वी कैन शो सम शॉट्स इन द प्लेयर वेटिंग एरिया लाइक हाउ इज द मूड देयर ऑफ बोथ द प्लेयर्स दैट वुड बी एपिक दैट वुड बी एपिक टू जस्ट सी आई डोंट नो इफ वी कैन टेक अ कैमरा इन एंड जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट व्हाट द प्लेयर्स आर डूइंग राइट नाउ द he isn't that the same movie how does it go nanna re nanna re nanna re nanna re parso re that song mm. and tere bina be that's also guru really what, oh what a oh my god. god what a coincidence it's meant like to be we are just killing it it's like oh, the universe is has is bringing anna and nana together in these mysterious ways exactly and the universe is asking us to go off screen so that we can just be <laughs> saved who's because on... tomato they are throwing <laughs> nothing like that sagar just wanted to look at amruta on stage there <laughs> only amruta can be seen <laughs> only amruta can be seen and <laughs> that has, has put... more meaning than <laughs> one sagar four five oh, camera he gave her <laughs> say she also left but you can see how the arrangements are guys they have a big screen there and the chess board there and by the way today tanya there's no lunch for you because this what? will end have at 3:30 have you eaten 3:30. everything that was there <laughs> hey, that's why there's no lunch and we are there. starting the next broadcast at 3:45 so you exactly 12 minutes to eat your i food. can't believe you're just laughing it is so evil i'm not laughing i i also didn't eat anything i ate one biscuit you and ate you are one biscuit you are, five you're, times you're that you went me. out that's actually five biscuits you're, you're talking to me as if i had some huge meal or something okay we have a super chat sagar is ready to sacrifice no 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 i am not ready to sacrifice anyone guys i am very much keen that everyone's healthy but i am all for Contact. excitement and entertainment mm. which tanya agrees with me otherwise she wouldn't have been seeing sagar sach bol agar ana ka heart rate 20 200 chala gaya te ko to maza hi aa jayega maza nahi mere ko tension hoga i will be on the edge aap apna jaan 200 200 go for it go 200 200 it's like 200 don't you think it's like you don't even know what you are asking for sometimes exactly, exactly. sagar and when that happens you don't know what's going to happen so it's just like you know you want to sit in that ride and you're like i want to go to the ride i want to go to that ride and when you sit on that ride you want to be like i want to get down from this that's the feeling that could happen but until we don't experience it we won't know so that's the thing wow well oh uh, heart rate was almost 170 we'll see where no it was like no, a... 162 i think was yeah, the highest peak. she went uh and maybe the next game if nana zagnitze manages to complicate positions which she will can, because can. she has to yeah she doesn't have an option she's playing and with the black pieces she's coming they they are coming on the screen tanya maybe mm. we can have them yeah there you have it both of them this might be the last game or if nana zagnitze wins 
and there she adjusts her heart heart rate machine nana has to win on demand a very determined looking anna there yeah and it's so you know nana's been leading the tournament throughout so she knows that it's it just feels like she has to do this now right right and it would be interesting and i think we all are looking for this game for nana to strike back and then go into armageddon so that we can have a nice sort of armageddon yeah okay let's go guys time to begin i think the arbiter will come and say start or they'll start the clock on their own i don't know what's going to happen and they've begun they've begun all right let's take a look at what the opening is and how does nana want to create chances with black so d4 played knight f6 on the board will she, she go for took, kings she took like 10 seconds yeah tanya to play knight f6 and then okay we've got a nimzo indian mm. sagar on the board e3, e3 is one of the most solid rubenstein system one of the most solid approaches with white against the nimzo indian a perfect choice when all you need is a draw right right and nimzo is also a good opening to complicate stuff here bishop d2 is this main line uh, sort of becoming one of the main lines for white now these days ah winning on demand with black is not going to be easy tanya no for it's... sure and that too with anna being really in the zone and we are getting the heart rates on the screen guys there you have the hearts but let's have the rate as well <laughs> okay we'll try to get them guys 137 okay all good Tanya, it's good. rising slowly but surely. One forty-two, one forty-three, one forty-two. Sadhu jata hai sagar. Nahi, nahi. Kam hota hai the one forty-two. Kaise the one forty-four? One forty-five? One forty-six? Okay, what is the opening? B six. So B six. It's a very uh, nice. I I think Nana is doing it right in the opening. She's just keeping all the pieces. She's going to go bishop b seven. Knight will go to d7. She will bring her bishop back to d6 or e7. Rook will go to e8. She will break with c5. Have that hanging pawn structure. Mm. I think for a fighting game, this is a good approach. One hundred percent. I mean, rook c1, white be killega, c7 pay attack karega. You want to go bishop d3. You want to go short castle. Of course, white is totally fine here, Sagar right. as well. No, no, of course. It's just going to be uh, all about. trying to get your opponent low on the clock mm. and creating your chances so bishop b7 played at some point black wants to get c5 before that move the bishop back like you mentioned uh and that's the plan that nana is looking at shot castle i'm expecting rook e8 or bishop d6 here i kind of like the move rook e8 because it also gives the flexibility to fall back with the bishop all the way to f8 right But Nana uh, makes another choice, a completely a different six. one. She decides to go for a six because you know she wants to put her bishop on d six and doesn't want to be bothered by knight b five ideas. So now knight e five. I think Tanya Anna Ushanina is doing it well. She'll go f four, then bishop e one, bishop h four. That's a typical idea in these positions. Very well said, Sagar. You want to improve your position of d two, and she goes for it. She goes for f four. She wants to put her bishop on e one, but what f four does is it makes e three weak. Mm. So at some point, which might be now, black will go c five. Right. It is time to right. strike in the center it's and important. open the center. It's important because bishop e one, bishop h four is a dangerous idea, guys. With this bishop pinning this knight and this bishop looking on h four and the rook swinging up from f three to h three, it can be a huge attack. That would be super dangerous. Not something that you want. When you're tr you're the one who's trailing by a point, need to win the game to force a play out an Armageddon, and F4. I'm expecting Nana to go C5 without delay here. Right, but Tanya, look at the time. Nana and has three minutes. And she goes for it, I think. Yes, on C5. the board. C5. C5 played. I think White still has to continue with your plan. Mm. You still want yeah, to play yeah, yeah. Bishop that, E1. That looks like a good plan. But what about the time? She has three minutes on the clock, while Anna has a solid one minute lead, and also Anna. Heart rate is reaching one sixty once again, guys. Getting stressful. The big question for Black would be where do you want to put your knight at the B eight knight? Do you want to C6. get it to C six, right? Because you want to target the D four pawn. Correct. 
So that's really important. Also, there are ideas of expanding on the queen side with c4, b5, b4. Mm -hmm. So all these plans uh, are available and Nana needs to make a choice whether she wants to continue putting pressure on the center or try to expand on the queen side. Rook c1 played, I'm expecting a developing move like knight c6 now. She goes, yeah, knight c6 seems like a good idea. And I think Anna's move, rook c1, tad to slow, right? Because you want to play on the king side with bishop e1. Rook c1 doesn't really add so much. Of course, it's a decent move. But knight c6 played by Nana. And hitting the d4 pawn now. Yeah. So you are having a direct threat already. And let's say that you were to make a move like bishop mm -hmm. e1. White can, black can already start taking on d4 Sagar. Because after knight d4, bishop h7, knight h7, queen d4. There's a nice little tactic with bishop c5 Ooh, taking advantage the of the pin. You lose the queen there. Okay, knight c6 on the board. Let's see what does Anna Ushanina plays. Knight g4. Whoa, that was a bit surprising here. Knight g4 moving the knight away from e5 voluntarily. But the point is that, you know what, d4 is weak, but so is d5. Mm. And the knight on f6 is the defender of the d5 pawn. So knight g4 is targeting that. If you take on d4, white can take on f6. You take the knight back, white will take the d5 pawn. Yeah. So it becomes a big, big mess. And also, Tanya, I think the best move here, oh, she takes it. She takes on g4, queen g4. Now your d5 pawn is hanging as Tanya has just showed us. But also d4 is hanging. So what can we do? Like cd4, Tanya, knight d5. What's the evaluation of that position? Very, very it's difficult. A, it's a mess. It's a total mess for black. Imagine you take she on e3. On d4. This is going to be completely chaotic. Knight d5, Sagar. You yeah. take on e3 and white can start building an attack with a... Oh my god, bishop c3, you hit g7, That's you're going crazy. knight f6 check, you can't go g6 because of knight f6, crazy. this is game over, so white has to be, black has to be super alert, I don't know what Anna Nana takes has it. in mind. Anna takes the of pawn on d5 and her heart rate is moving to 165, 165. That's because, the highest. because she thinks she's winning this, she's going to win this championship, if she manages to keep control. Well, she's definitely not managing to keep control on her heart rate currently, but the position is completely in Anna's yeah, control. Yeah, yeah, very much better for her with the knight here. And as we have just seen, taking this pawn is akin to disaster. The two bishops are going to be too strong here. But if you don't take that pawn, Tanya, what do you do? I'm struggling to find a move for black. You cannot afford Bishop to open C5. that diagonal. She finds maybe the most decent move possible. Did she play it? Yeah, bishop c5. Alright, while well, you're hitting my knight, I don't have too many squares. I have to defend it. E4 seems like the only E3 option. E3 is also hanging. So yeah, E4 makes a lot of sense. And will and I like White's position a lot here. I mean, I have full control over the center. This D4 pawn is not your friend. It's really my friend with the white pieces blocking your bishop. I have this pawn advance space control. Uh, I'm enjoying life with yeah, White here. B4 I... is coming in, hitting that bishop on C5. You're right. You're right. E4 is just the right move here. But... I think if she finds it, she will be on course to victory. But if she doesn't, things can get quite messy here. But also, Tanya, don't forget this Queen H3 threatening mate in one. Does she do it? Oh, she plays it. She's... My goodness. Wow. What a move. Queen H3. Of course, H6 is going to be played now to stop that. I, I have a feeling that after Black defends this mate, we will see E4, E4 on the board. Come. E4 This is a nice intermediate move. Very nice intermediate move. And the point is you're creating weaknesses on the king side. Sagar, what happened? Why not F5? Okay, she goes. Okay, what? F5 she is went a difficult G6. move to make. G6 weakening the dark squares. And now E4, E4 F5, F5, this bishop F5. on D2 is going to come out. Oh what are you going to do? Oh my god, Anna Ushanina very close towards winning this title. This has been so far a one-sided tiebreak with Anna just taking the lead. She was in a little bit of trouble at the start of the first game, but it turned around. She converted that and now F5, just F5, open up that bishop. Oh it's dark squared weakness. You won that bishop on H6. Try and get it to G5. Firstly, how are you reacting to F5? No, I how think I don't even know because Tanya F6 is a threat. Bishop G, uh, sorry, Bishop H6 Queen is a H6, threat. Queen H6, Bishop G5. There's, there's FG, there's Knight F6 in the air. There's too many things happening here and absolutely Sad. disastrous position for Nana Zagnitze. She has not played this well at all. Anna Ushanina at a solid 146 now. Again, when she's winning, she knows it.
she you know when things are under control she gets her heart rate under control but now she's taking her time she is down to 1 minute 20 seconds and she goes queen eight six it's fine sagar even though not going with an immediate f5 but, but f5 it's, kelo it's in the i think black has to play f5 otherwise you're busted if black doesn't stop white threat of f5 then black it's game over for nana i think what uh, anna wants is also to go rook f3 rook h3 at some point yeah that's true No, she goes rook e eight. She wants to kick this bishop away. F- but now, no, take the bishop because that's the key bishop. Just kill it. Then f five. Then bishop g five. Then knight of six. Tanya, that's over. That is game over. Saga rook c five. I love it. Black has only one defender that can save the king. This is the moment to blow it off. F five. We've been screaming this move. Let's it go. It has to come. Anna, will she take rook c five? Oh, she takes she it. She does it. She, she does it. This, this win is after this absolutely move. Absolutely over for Anna. F five now. F six threatened. F g six threatened. This is beautiful play by Anna Ushanina. Yeah, this was a total collapse with the black pieces. F five, bishop g five, f g six, knight f six. Everything coming in. This is an attack that you cannot fight against. Yeah. F five, wonderful move there. It's also so difficult for the players after a long day of chess. They've already played three rapid games, Sagar. Yeah, yeah. You play one blitz game. Firstly, adjusting to that, the exhaustion that they're feeling, and it's all a result of that. This collapse that we are seeing by Nana. No, I agree with you, and I think somehow Anna Ushanina has just maintained her nerves so much better here, and has managed to play some tremendous chess. and right now you can see nana zagni is in knows that there is no way to avoid defeat it's all, all over she's just trying to think for something the final possibilities here that can be done let's just go to our big screen so that you guys can follow the end of this game in this view f5 she goes rook to e5 and you can just look at nana and you know that she knows that this is over yeah Yeah. You know, you don't she's not leaning into the board. You can see that she can feel that it, this is not something that she'll be able to defend. Correct. Bishop G5. Bishop F6 coming in knight oh, F6 and that is it. That and is Anna it. And Anna Ushanina is the champion of the first ever Tata Steel <laughs> India Chess India Rapid Women's Tournament. Congratulations to Anna Ushanina! What an event this was. She was always in the running, but Nana Zagnitze had a great event. Some surprising saves there in the end, in the tiebreak. Anna Ushanina was the stronger player and definitely deserves this big win. Yeah, she paced herself amazingly well in this tournament. If I'm not mistaken, she did not lose even a single game. Uh, in the in the rapids, right? she saved so many so many games and uh, sagar we have to talk about the standings let's have a look at the standings here we have anna ushanina winning the tournament with 6 and 1/2 points but winning the tie break with a brutal score of 2 nil not just a brutal score that second game was pure destruction yeah, too good I, it also felt that nana collapsed somewhere you know she was not able to sort of keep things under control But Anna made the most of it, which also is very difficult, and found these beautiful moves and rook c five sagar, mm. not giving any chance of the bishop coming to defense. Absolute precision. Too good. And with that, with one sixty five heart rate, with a hundred and sixty five heart rate, Anna Ushanina wins the rapid championship. Nana Zagnitze finishes second. Uh, Harika Dronavali. Oh, third place to the new mother. You know, who's just a three year, three month old mother. uh playing some brilliant chess uh, and being unbeaten like harika always does scoring 5 and 1/2 points amazing stuff there and maria muzichuk hampi and vashali all with 5 points sagar i can see in the standings at least in the women section mm. it feels like the experience triumphed over youth yes because if you see all the first 5 names they yeah. are all experienced players i think vashali is the only one who could finish like even she is in the bottom half uh, and yeah very rightly said very well uh, put there uh, and 
five prizes right tanya five prizes it's a bit of a hard break but i think the prizes get shared if you have the same point so uh, uh, we might have to confirm that right. vaishali might still have made it to the prize list oh yes but vaishali has had a great run in this tournament lot of good games lot of big fights so big congratulations to her as well anna muzichu we should get anna ushani na here yeah we should we should uh, yeah. yeah if she and by the way the Oh, oh there's a pressure. We might be also starting the other one. The next, the uh, next event. But maybe, maybe we can, can join her to uh, join us for yeah. a few few minutes in that. Absolutely. And uh, Sagar, I think there's a blitz coming up for these ladies. Oh yes. Where uh, Vantika will be, uh, Vantika will be replaced by Bhakti. Yeah. The rest of the field the remains. The new Arjuna Awardi. The new Arjuna Awardi will be back on the board. Anna Muzichuk definitely disappointed with her rapid play, and. Uh, we can we can call her in the open uh, yeah. event if she's so uh and first place tanya by the way just for our chat is 10000 and 5000 so if they share it it will be 7500 dollars each third place is 4000 3000 and 2000 from all of us here in kolkata it's a wrap to the women's rapid event we will now move to the open Whoa. rapid event which will start in roughly around 20 minutes or so time to take some break tanya it was a pleasure commentating with you Too amazing too much fun sagar and what a an end we had a tie break a playoff everything that we could be hoped for we will be back with the final day of rapid for the open section see you in just a little bit chat see you and maybe director saab if there's anything that you would like to show Here you go. by the way this is some scenes here of the playing hall and this is the final tie break between nana and anna nana resigned there and anna became the champion take care guys see you soon bye bye hi